Судья устава Марина Мочарова, всероссийская категория Россия. Игры проводятся до 8 побед. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by Emily Frazier. We're coming to you live from Lynx Nikki Stadium in the heart of Moscow for the final of the 2019 uh, Kremlin Cup. And hello, Emily. Uh, excited to be here. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, of course. This is my first ever Kremlin Cup, so it's uh, brilliant that I've managed to just step in for the final. Um, and what a final this is going to be. I mean, Tyler Steyer against David Alcady. And, you know, this is like a pre Moscone Cup match as such. So, yeah, really excited for this. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, and most do, uh, Emily Frazier, uh, one of the leads at uh, Matchroom Multisport that uh, run the Moscone Cup and many other events. And we have Tyler Steyer and really his first major final. Yeah. Um, David Alcady, of course, who has won this event before. And ironically, I believe when he won it before, he had won the World Pool Masters. And earlier this year, he won the World Pool Masters. So we'll see if he can uh, make it a, a double win again. Uh, yeah. He, they both made a nice run. Um, and I feel like that David kind of has this experience here when it comes to this kind of match where, like you said, he's had the final before um, and he has a lot more experience um, in these type of matches as well. So, but, you know, Tyler's definitely a great player and I think this is going to be a great match. Yeah, and we had talked about it earlier and I'd mentioned to you that when you're trying to get your first big win, some things have to go your way and I think few things have gone Tyler's way and then he's backed it up with some exceptional play. Um, very focused um, and we'll see how it plays out now to open. He's won the lag which is huge in this race to eight mm -hmm. especially the way he can break the balls. So just to go through the rules Jeremy with you so it's race to eight alternate break. Yeah it's alternate break all ball fouls uh, call shot um, no early 10 ball so you can play the 10 ball, mm -hmm. but then it would respot and you would continue your run. Obviously, I'm very nine ball uh, related. So 10 ball is a little bit unfamiliar for me. And when I um, was reading up on it and I see that you can't make the early 10 ball, I'm like, what? Yeah, that's a WPA <laughs> so rule. Yeah, some tournaments, they don't play that way. Some do, but the WPA, they do. And uh, it's still basically like like nine ball they shoot him in order so you'll yeah. be very familiar with that and the 10 is the winner <laughs> okay so if a nine ball goes down and then i i say that it's the end of the rack you just got to bear with me for a few of them that's right okay he started off with a nice opening shot on the one uh he's a little thin on the two so he's gonna have to travel the cue ball back and forth somewhere where he's looking at now and as far as the break's concerned um, there's a lot of guys that break them really well and but I think Tyler's one of those top guys as far as the 10 ball break, top five or 10 in the world as far as breaking the balls. And I haven't been watching all of his matches for this tournament, um, Jeremy, but how has he been breaking throughout? Oh, well, well, you can't get this far without breaking well. I mean, it's a world-class field. Um, you have to continually make balls and get shots, and that's a nice one there. He's going to fall a little straighter than he wants, so this could pose his first problem. And not so much a problem, but it's going to make things a little more difficult on the four. But both these guys, you'll see, uh, you'll see David really usually smash him. Uh, of course, he's breaking the balls really well, also, and he had a lot of big wins yesterday. Uh, opened with uh, beating Kachi um, in a great match, and then eliminated SVB. That looked like he was going to steamroll the tournament. And guess what? The only guy to beat SVB was David Alcade both times. It looked like David had a very tough draw, so obviously getting to this final was just huge for him, and he must be feeling. A Obviously very strong looking ahead of it. Yeah, I think uh, some of us had talked about it yesterday that if they, if they played the final yesterday just because the confidence that David had was rolling with with all the players he had beaten, um, things may have been a little tougher for Tyler as far as that. But I think with an opening match here, I think I think it's pretty much a 50-50 in my opinion now. A tough shot to, to, on the four here, our first tough shot at the match. He looks very calm, collected, Tyler, doesn't he? I feel like Johan's probably been with him this morning, just, you know, telling him what yeah. to do. And yeah, and, and I think the main thing that we try to stress to Tyler is, is you know, 
Don't worry about it if you're not perfect on the ball and a great shot there. Great shot. Perfect. Um, you're not going to play perfect position. Just, you know, he's got all the tools. So just kind of flow with things. If you're a little out of position, like right there on the four, don't worry so much. You yeah. know, I mean, most likely his fundamental is going to hold up, which is one of the things that's commented so much about Tyler is how solid he is fundamentally. And he's got a five in the side, and he's got to kind of probably either pinch the cue ball back for the eight in the corner. He may be able to stun over for the eight in the side. And forgive us at times because we're we're a little ways away from the table, so we have to strictly use the monitor uh, when we talk about the game. When you talk about the game, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like well, I'm a pool um, expert. Well, you've but, been around it, and you're a smart lady, so I'm well. sure you're picking up on things. <laughs> we have to try and be experts at fishing, gymnastics, so it's uh, it's pretty tough. But I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah. So many different uh, different things that Matchroom does. Boxing, darts, everything, right? Oh, Ten you, pin you, bowling. And you have a snooker background with match rooms, so there <laughs> yeah. you go. Although, and I hate to say this publicly, I actually do prefer Paul than oh, snooker, yeah. 100%. Okay, so what looks like a, a really, really nice break and run. He started off with a really nice shot, but he, uh, an easy shot on the one, but got a little out of line on the four, and he performed. So there you go. The American gets on the board first. 1-0 to Tyler Steyer. It's a great setup they've got in here. It's the first time I've obviously stepped into this stadium here, Jeremy, and uh, they've obviously um, windled it down to the two, the two tables that you can see here, but you could see on the pictures and the opening ceremony how many tables they had in here, and it just looks so grand, and they've got all the flags hanging up, and it's just such a spectacular um, venue for it. Yeah, how about that banner back there? That's, I know. That's some f probably 60 by... Oh, bigger than that, probably. <laughs> More like 60 by 80, maybe, feet, uh, yeah. something like that. Huge. But it's great that they can, you know, get a lot of people in here, and it's nice to see that there's a crowd in here. So, you know, midday, and, um, yeah, it's fascinating. Well, it's a big city, and there's so much going on every day, it seems like. Uh, when you drive around, they've got all kinds of events. Uh, so it's nice. They do support their, their pool and their pyramid. Yeah, what a shot he made on the four right here, coming across to bump the ten. So we'll get our first look at David. Um, very established player for playing professionally probably some 15-plus years. He had a big win at the World Pool Masters earlier this year, and I believe it was March. Uh, is that right? Yeah, in March in Gibraltar, mm -hmm. um, he won against Alex Kazakis, uh, which was, I mean, everyone talks about. Um, the final with the eight ball or the nine ball, the whatever. Nine ball it was. Bank, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, what a shot that was. Yeah, hill hill it was also. We had to get security in to push the set back up because all of David Alcady's friends had piled in and they yeah. pushed the set over. It was uh, smashed. It, it was huh? madness. So, and I think this is the one advantage, and we've seen it quickly now with a dry break by David. But I think, you know, and not to take anything away from David, Tyler's going to have an advantage breaking the balls against most of his opponents. That's how great he breaks the balls. Okay. But, but you don't expect a dry break too often from David. He did miss him a little bit, but uh, a big shot here for Tyler. He's got natural position on the two. Oh, he hit it perfect. Now he needs to come with the cue ball a little bit. Uh, okay. So what's he going to do here? Well... These guys can really see it better than us, but if he can cut the ball on the side, he's definitely going to go offensive, whether it be a cut shot or a bank, but I think a cut. And the one impressive thing about Tyler is we talked about it earlier in the, in the event uh, that he wasn't so settled. Uh, a little frustration at times and uh, almost really just a matured quite a bit during this event and all the way in now into the final. And, and he banks the ball really well, so if he has any doubt on the cut shot, no reason to, to shoot at something with a little doubt with a real playable bank on the two cross side. Now he's kind of close to it, <clears throat> so he's got to get the cue out of the way if he's going to draw the cue ball back. 
So there's no shot clock here or anything, is there? I was no. just waiting for some beeps to come in. But. Right. No, but I'll tell you what. We, you know, we all know the guys that play a little slower, and yeah. I had to commentate some of those guys' match, but they played at a nice pace. Seems like everybody um, in the pool world has kind of picked it up, and that's probably from playing with more events with the shot clock. Yep. So they see results that they can have with the shot clock, so they're carrying it over to tournaments without. It seems to just suit nine ball, um, yeah. the shot clock, doesn't yeah. it? And it just, you know, appeals to the casual viewer as such, and it just adds that little bit of excitement in there as well. And I think it's a good feeling for the players when they have success with it. Now, some of them, you know, the shot clock's going to get to everybody at times, meaning it's going to frustrate you. Mm. You're going to maybe make an excuse because of it. Um, oh, yeah. Heard, heard a few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you have success with it, it's mm. a very good feeling, so... So he's got the four in the side. Pretty perfect position there to get to the five to the six back in the other side. So really no problems here. And no mistakes so far by a young Tyler Steyer. He'll just he'll just try to hold the angle here on the on the five. That's pretty perfect. Key to this is stay off the rail with the cue ball when he comes across. If he stays off the rail, he can manage getting from the six to the seven pretty easily. And we've got a lot of players in the stands that are in this tournament, not only sweating their, their friends, but probably keeping an eye on this young Tyler Steyer for, you know, what will be the next couple of decades in professional pool. Yeah, definitely, and it's... Uh well, you don't want to say too much, Jeremy, but obviously we've still got um, Team USA to select from for the Moscone Cup. And, I mean, this kind of run for Tyler is obviously huge for the selections that you and Johan have. Oh, well, yeah, and the selection's hard, right? Of course, it's always hard. Um, but we want to select behind success. Of course. You know, we don't want to have, like, a tough selection with no success. That's yes. the worst. And there's a great stable of players that we've got amongst Tyler, Corey, Billy, and Max, obviously. And uh, it is great for Tyler to obviously be so deep in this tournament here um, and to see the teammates here watching as well. Oh, They're absolutely. all supporting, and it's good to see that. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and all the guys during the Kremlin Cup had success. Of course, they didn't make the final like Tyler, but they all had some success at different moments. Uh, Max played really solid, struggled with the break, but then once he got that down, it was a lot better. Uh, Corey, the only reason he didn't make the final 32 is because he had to face Billy and one of them yeah. had to go. Uh, Billy had a really couple nice wins, 8-1 over uh, over a Kazakis uh, early in the winter side. And mm -hmm. then and then who am I forgetting? Uh, Sk Skyler, of course, uh, played really well, and, and SVB was right there to win the tournament. So, And that's a sign of comfort there with that stroke. Okay. I feel like I'm learning so much about Temple now. Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying, I'm sitting here going, right, okay, yes. <laughs> well, you're like a good I said, teacher, uh, Jeremy. Oh, I thank say. you. There's, they're very similar to nine ball, besides the call shot. Sure. Uh, but you'll see the guys. The thing about the call shot is, it really puts a lot of value in safety because someone has to kick to the rail or jump the ball and call the shot. There's mm -hmm. not any luck behind that. So you'll see the the players uh, play a little more safe at times. But really, great players are aggressive. So it's not going to change too, too much. Now, of course, the break is different. Uh, no early 10 ball is a little different. Now, he ended up a little short there, but he's he's on a nice line. So he should be able to handle it. So obviously, Tyler's breaking next as well. So if he gets mm -hmm. a strong break here, then David's obviously looking at not being at the table for a long time. Does that... Is that tough for the player, being sort of sat in that chair for that long? And when you get back to the table to maybe make like a semi-hard shot, it's, you know, harder to do than in normal when you're sort of in stroke and such? It is, it is. And it can be if you think about it a little bit or if, like you said, it's a medium tough shot, you know, you kind of say to yourself, oh, man, the first shot I get is this mm -hmm. medium tough one. But the thing it does the most is the other guy that gets the time at the table. Yep. It really helps him a lot more. I think, then it hurts the guy <clears throat> coming from the chair. I hear you. So now 2 nothing and, and breaking the balls, as you said, Emily, in game three. Um, 
no mistakes besides a dry break by David, uh, but uh, no mistakes at all mm -hmm. from Tyler Starr. They got a great production here. Um, you see, sort of the cameras around, and it's good to just see. You know, they've got. Uh, sorry, I'm going into my TV production head, and you see like mm -hmm. the jib camera, and they've just got such. They've they've obviously put so much behind the production here for the Kremlin Cup, and it's uh, it's just great to also have that in pool. Um, oh, you know, yeah. other events that you know put that amount of effort into um, a tournament like this, and it's obviously just been such a great event. I mean, next year I'd love to come for the whole thing. Yeah. Well, they're proud here, you know. They want to have a nice production. Um, you can know, you can't see it in the camera, but the pyramid tables are six by twelves, right? So they had, f along with the pool tables, forty-five tables in this arena, uh, oh. and those six by twelves are no joke yeah. to work on. I bet uh, that was a, <laughs> I bet that was a tough install for yeah <laughs> for diamond. I'm not sure when they started it. It's a, a pretty a lot of work though. And I think they've already had the ladies' pyramid final. And I th I'm, I think after our 10-ball final here, they're going to have the, the men's pyramid final. Okay. I was watching a bit of it at the Bazaar mm -hmm. um, Club last night, and I was trying to get my head around it. I've never seen it before, so it's quite an interesting one. It's a crazy game. But impressive, though. Kind of like this break right here. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay, he's going to get a nice shot at the one. Now, here's our first situation that the... See, this is where, like, the combo's there, but you can't make the combo. Well, you can make it, but <laughs> oh, it's not a but winner. it's not a winner. Yeah, yeah, the 10 will spot, and he'll continue his run. Gotcha. But the problem is, look where it's going to spot Emily with the 4-8 already a little covered up. Gotcha. So it'll spot somewhere near there on that line. So there's going to be some congestion for, for Tyler as far as trying to run out. One good thing, and we'll get another look at the screen, uh, the overhead. Uh, the three's near. So if he needs to break the balls out, mm -hmm. the three's near to possibly to break. do that. Yeah. I mean, David must just be sitting there just saying, like, there's nothing I can do right now. Well, I'm sure he's got his, his whatever he says to himself that keeps himself calm. Uh, I'm sure it's in Spanish as well. <laughs> but, uh, he does speak good English. Oh, yeah, but, very good. Very but whenever good. it's a TV interview, he says that he doesn't speak English. I think it's just his shyness. <laughs> yeah, somewhat like all our Efren Reyes, uh, people always yeah. are like, the, he doesn't speak very good English, does he? And I was like, he speaks he great speaks English. Fine. <laughs> he just doesn't want to get tattooed by everybody all the time, you yeah. know, coming up to him. So. I mean, it's very smart. Yeah. Okay, so and this is what I was small. talking about. Okay. So she'll freeze it to the four, but it'll be on the line. And if it doesn't go, it goes... Exactly, okay. where she's spotting it now. Gotcha. It's a delicate, delicate little job right there. And then this way you're talking about where you need to obviously break these up. These oh, three, yeah, so. yeah. I don't see anything that's played, but the, like I said, the three's nice and handy, and there's really no worry about breaking the balls. He can shoot the three and come across the top of the four and uh, maybe not come away with a shot, but he's not probably going to get snookered. That's the main thing. Keep control of the table. It's a lovely day in Moscow. It's a little chilly, but the sun's out. Yeah, you walk outside expecting it to be baking hot, and then it is obviously quite chilly, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful city. It's the first time I've ever been here. Um, hopefully I'll get to see a little bit of sightseeing tomorrow. Oh, we yeah. should all do a Team USA bonding yeah, sightseeing. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, the, we've talked about it, and we planned on that. Uh, we need to do a bit of training as well, so maybe we can involve both. Yeah, so you've got the Dream Challenge coming up on yeah. Monday, which is uh, Team USA against... Team Russia, and mm. I watched that relentlessly last year, Jeremy, because obviously it paid a big part to our Moscone Cup, and I was sitting there at home watching it like a loser that I am. Oh, yeah. But it's so great that, you know, we've come over here, we've got um, the Matchroom team that have come here as well to help support um, ABN as well, and it's such a fantastic uh, event to do this Dream Challenge. Yeah, now, this is what you, yeah. Yeah, a little cannon into the four. Yeah, Vladimir and his entire staff and the Navy and they do a great job. And I'll never forget last year's, not only because, of course, it going hill hill, but mm -hmm. the way Shane played uh, to win it. It was yeah. just unbelievable. The outs he made, a little unfortunate for Federer. He had missed a two ball that looked like if he made that, that it wasn't anything Shane was going to be able to do. Just, they were going to win, but just barely missed it and kind of woke Shane up. And he went on to make some incredible outs. But speaking of incredible outs, uh, it looks like a third one here for for Tyler Steyer. And I feel for Arcady because I want to see him get up on the table and, actually, and you know, play a few shots. He's a great player. 
and he's a fun player as well. Mm -hmm. Can be a little. He was a little more animated in his younger years. Uh, kind of calm that down a little bit, but they'll, you can still see the blood flowing in David. Uh, I like that. So he should just kind of roll this in easy. I think anyways, if he can hold, you want to make sure the cue ball stays off the rail and he should have a natural angle to move from the seven to the eight. Now, if he elects there's too much angle here, he'll run the cue ball. That's a nice shot. Really kind of using the entire pocket to hold the cue ball. You can just see how, well, personally, from my point of view, that how different Tyler is around the table. He just has this confidence about him, which is obviously so beneficial to his game at the moment. When you look at him a year ago, it was obviously very different in how he's developed as a player. And, you know, this is his uh, first big final here. And this, what a confidence boost this will be for him. He oh, yeah. Pulls this one off. Like any of the young players that uh, have so, so many tools, uh, not only a win, but at big matches, uh, they just, you know, they kind of just raise them up a little bit. Percentage points going up and up and up, and then a win really boosts you and gives you a lot of confidence. He's definitely one to watch for for all of the USA players right now, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's got a choice here. He can flirt with the 9 and 10, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to draw the ball instead of trying to play short side. Did so. you say flirt with the 9 and 10? <laughs> well, maybe something <laughs> could go wrong, but he's hit it pretty well, and he, he's draw the ball right between the 9 and 10, so he's good. I'm loving he's the modernized commentary from <laughs> Jeremy. Well, pull lingo, we have a lot of it, and it takes years to master it. Don't worry, Emily. I feel like I've got a long, long way ahead of me. I'll stick yeah. to what I'm good at. <laughs> well, I'm sure, like the darts, you've heard all. You know, they have different. You know, yeah, all the different course. sports have their own little language. We used to do poker um, back in the days at Matchroom, oh, yeah. and the lingo behind that. I mean, it was oh, yeah. just crazy. I was a poker player, so at one time. <laughs> all right, so Tyler Steyer now on a nine and ten with really no mistakes and really not even. Uh, a position play error, you could say. I mean, he got a little straight on a three ball in the first game, but other than that. I'm not going to take much time on this 10. So we'll get to see David here in rack number four. But obviously, the way Tyler's playing, he can't afford another dry break. And we're going to have our first time out of the match. And I think a smart time out for David Alcady. Yeah, he's uh, obviously going off before he, his break. 3-0 um, to Tyler. Race to eight. Yeah, they don't lengthen the race. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sprint in the in yep. professional pool, but it also makes you realize that the heat's on right from the lag. And it's tough for Alcady because obviously uh, with the Moscone Cup ranking points at the moment, um, He's, you know, he can't get into Team Europe on the ranking points. Mm -hmm. So for him, his win at the Whirlpool Masters this year is, you know, a strong case for Team Europe's wildcard for Captain Marcus Shama. And there must be a lot of pressure sitting on him right now in this match because if he wins this, then that is, he's got a really, really strong case to be on the team. I'm sure Marcus is joining in. Well, I, I hope he's tuning in and watching. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he is. Marcus is a busy man, but this is important stuff. Uh, and like you said, uh, well, look at this arena. It's just fantastic. Yeah. What a great arena like this. You know, sometimes we go to these uh, these venues uh, with matchroom and you have to box it all in and you have the black dress. Like, this is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's just a pure reflection of the tournament that it's been. How, how long um, does the tournament last for? Is it five days it started? Uh, it started, uh, well, we had registration Tuesday and then play started early Wednesday. So we had four days of play, but the actually pyramid goes five days of play. Um, pyramid game can be a little slower than okay. ten ball. It's a very difficult game. Um, and the entire complex here, uh, you just arrived last night, so you haven't got to, this is your first time to the venue, uh, but we have the biggest stadium in all of Moscow, just next door. And all the soccer fields, the parks inside the complex. Yeah, it's, I saw that it's as a we pretty were incredible in. place, yeah. It We've really done a bit of walking around here, so. <laughs> but it makes it nice. It makes it to where the walk's not so bad. Of course, it's just wonderful that you can come to cities like this and they host such a great event like this. And like I said, I'm, I'd like to come back next year and, start and come for the start and come for the opening ceremony. 
Yeah, get a little sightseeing. If I can get some time off work, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Barry's been to Moscow before, so he he probably knows how nice it is. <laughs> I'm not sure if he knows what holiday form is, Jeremy. No. <laughs> well, there's not many golf courses I heard <laughs> near, so maybe not. I won't tell him you said that. So uh, follow us on ABN Billiards, mm -hmm. um, and obviously you get all of the live updates and the live stream, um, and that's where you should get the information for the Dream Challenge on Monday as well. Yeah, I believe we're starting at 8 p.m. on Monday, yeah, local th time. Yeah, I thought it was 6 originally, but uh, I think I, was it, say, I think it is I 8. That wrong. So <laughs> it's, it's going to run pretty late, uh, but there's going to be five hours of coverage all three days. Um, just the setup that they've got at that bizarre club, it looks brilliant. And I've just seen, obviously, uh, only the first setup of it. There's much more uh, to do there, but what the team have done um, for that there, it's going to look great. And um, it's going to be a good three-day event. Yeah, and he uh, he loves pool. Vladimir does um, the event. Like at the at the Baza, they don't charge pool time. They've never no. charged pool time since I mean, they've opened. Just trying to make the sport grow here in Russia. It's such a fantastic club. I went there last night, and it's just mm -hmm. modernized and it's fresh and clean. It's lo it's lovely. Good food, good service. All right, so, so David Alcade here. So David, obviously, just checking the rack there. That's something that we stopped. Um, on one of our rules. So what's he looking at there? Just the Well, he's just making sure uh, after the dry break, it may have been something that he was like, okay, let me just make sure everything's tidy on the rack. Yep. Um, but I think if he went back to look at the tape on that first break, he missed him a little bit. So when you, when you come across that one ball, uh, that's where the balls can maybe not go in the positions that uh, you anticipate. And he missed him actually a little bit there. He made a ball that you normally wouldn't make in the in the side, that being the three. Now, now this is that long shot you were talking about, medium difficult. It's not okay. a difficult shot at all, but, but with the seven there, he's going to be elevated. So a lot of pressure here at three nothing on a what what looked like to be an easy shot, but you can see he's elevated over the seven. So all of a sudden, it became a very difficult shot. Okay. Position is there though. I expect him to make it. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so he's going to probably have to play safe here. It's a shame. I was getting excited to see David play here for this rack. Well, I think he can knock the two away and get him behind the ten. The six is a little bit of a problem, meaning making the two escape. And the five's an issue as well. You can see the nine's got it covered up. That's got to go a little bit. It's got to go a little bit. Oof. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't fancy that shot, but I'm not a pool player. So. Yeah. Well, he almost didn't get a rail. No. Yeah, with the with the two and uh, now this is where the kick is very easy to hit. Uh, he could use a jump shot as well. And it, it's a choice here. He can kick firm, uh, trying to create a little space between the two and the and the cue ball. I kind of like soft kicking on the top of the two because you notice the seven is there in the way. So a good chance to leave him with no offensive shot. And that's kind of what you want when you're kicking. You you know, you're, you're not really looking for the snooker all the time, but you just don't want your opponent to run out behind your shot. Maybe give yourself a little chance. Now Tyler, who was, he went to the China Open, so he's been on this side of the globe for, for some time, so he's probably very comfortable. All right, this may work. Okay, this is going to keep him off the offensive play, and he tied the five and the ten up. So, so far, with some perfect play from Tyler Steyer and uh, a bit of fortune. Okay, should clip this to put it underneath the nine, I think, and run the cue ball. A couple rails behind the eight. He needs it to go, though. He needs it to go. Oh, that's nice speed there by David. This is where you really may see the jump cue. It's a bit dangerous, though. He's got to make sure he clears the five and ten, not only not fouling, but you can see the five and ten kind of jumbled up, so mm -hmm. he doesn't want to disturb those.
Tyler. That's uh, he's a really good. Well, we saw last year at the Moscone Cup, exceptional player with the jump cue. He really stole a couple points, in my opinion, from the Euros just with that jump cue last year. Okay, so again, making a good hit. So what's David thinking here for the shot? Well, we, I got to get a better glance at it again because there's a lot of, uh, like I said, congestion with that 5, 6, and 10. He'd like to probably knock the two away again, but it doesn't appear that's so easy. He's in a, this is a funny spot here. Can he float the two just past the six, like near the 10, and lay the cue ball on the side rail, kind of underneath the six? Or is he going to edge the two underneath the six? This is what you would call soft safety. Oh, nice, nice shot. Very nice. And this is where David must be so experienced in yeah. situations like this. Yeah, the safety part of the game. He's very solid, very solid kicking three cushion player. So this is where you'll see a two rail kick on top of the two uh, with a light speed. And this is one you can maybe come underneath and not get a rail, but but you still have to take the chance of kicking lightly here. Oh, he's done pretty well, but he's going to give up a shot. And so now David's real first opportunity uh, for a clearance. He's going to have to draw the cue ball back for the five on the side, but everything's open now. He's going to have issues getting from the six to the seven, though. So a tell, of, a tell of two games between the two players as far as David's got some difficulties here. This is going to be a pretty shot, a mass A shot. Put a lot on it. Got to hope it slows down. This could get right behind the eight. So, like I said, just a tell of two different games between the players. Everything not really agreeing with David so far. And, and Tyler started taking full advantage of some openings. Look at that, the Massey shot. And the only ball on that side of the table, it just gets just right up behind it. right behind it. <laughs> it's like a big old magnet. Okay, here he's going to soft kick to the top rail. Uh, what would be the short rail, trying to make the five in the side. And the only reason I say a little softly, because he could cut the five up by the ten and leave not much of a shot, and you keep accuracy, you have a better chance to make it whenever you just don't kind of whack it, you know? Okay, that's my style. But <laughs> that's <understand>. everybody's start, <laughs> that style everybody. when they start. I mean, he could go ahead and put some speed on it, but I like... I like the lighter kick like that. I think you make it more often. Well, I think he's got a chance for some good things to happen. Nevertheless, he's given Tyler a shot. And this is what you can't be doing against Tyler Steyer, especially when he's in this kind of game right now. Yeah. He's getting more confident every rack, every ball made. He's looking at that six to the seven that I talked about that's not easy. Position from the six to the seven, is, especially with the eight being there. It's not so easy to come across the table and make sure you're not getting snookered. But I tell you, with if he gets out here with breaking the balls in the fifth game, I, th I think it's going to be very difficult for David to win this final. I think the tides are going to have to turn majorly. Mm, nice. Confident stroke there. So this will be an interesting way that he plays this. Can he get two rails to the short side of the seven? I'm not so sure he can get enough dig on the cue ball to get by the eight and play the seven in what would be the top left corner on your screen. Top inside English, I don't think that's really uh, an option, which would be run the cue ball three rails. I think he's got to take a chance here coming two rails somewhere around the nine with the cue ball, trying to play the seven in the opposite corner. But this is where his fundamental really helps on the slick table because uh, he doesn't really overhit the ball, so he gives the cue ball time to, to grab the English. He wants to come 
Just a little right of where his hand's at now. Catch that second rail and then back over. Oh, he played the safety. Okay, so that's how difficult it was okay. to get from the six to the uh, seven. But the thing is, David loves this opportunity. He would much rather, we would always much rather when the guys have an option to try and run out on something that's reasonable uh, or the safety. We'd much rather have them play safe because it gives us another chance at the yeah, table. Yeah, of course. And he just, he needs that right now. He needs to just get on the table, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He needs a bit of fortune here. He'll call something in that near corner, the six there, yeah. And David, I talked about he's a really good three cushion player, so that really bodes well for when it, you're talking about kicking at okay. the ball. And again, with the nine being there, I would still think he's going to kick with like a medium speed just to make, make sure he keeps accuracy. And you know, with he may tie something up. He may leave the cue ball on top of the six, the six on top of the nine, something like that. So imagine if he's standing here thinking this and he's got the 30-second shot clock right now. Right, right. That's why uh, experience really helps with the with the when it comes to the shot clock because you kind of eliminate certain things quickly you are, like I would know there's certain things I'm not ever doing sure. so it really kind of fine tunes me on what I'm gonna do two rails I believe straight at the six and that's the speed I like as well and like I said a lot of good things could happen I don't know if he got the snooker or not mm -hmm. and he did so what's Tyler's options here Ooh. I'm not sure. We'll, oh, come on, Jeremy. You we'll, should be quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> You're meant to be the expert here. <laughs> we'll get a look at this. Uh, what a shot, though. And I, like I said, I like the speed a lot. He'll just kick one rail across the table and try and make it, I think. I've really got a feeling about Tyler for this match, you know. Mm -hmm. I just He just has this confidence at the table, and uh, it's really working well for him. And it looks like he's going to try and get to the end rail and just bump the six up underneath the nine. Um, the problem is, can he reach that? He's right-handed. So this is going to be difficult. Of course, he's a in very good shape and a, and a, a thin man, so bending in, in awkward positions may not be too difficult. Okay, the problem is on a slick table, the right English he wants to put on the ball may not grab. He may clip the six underneath the nine, though. Oh, no rail, though. That's going to be David Alcade's opening. A little bit of frustration there, you can see. Yeah, and that's what I meant as far as the English on the slick table. It doesn't grab so much like the, uh, you know, some of the pool room tables you play on and stuff like that at the pool clubs. And is that under the extra TV lighting and things like that? Absolutely. Obviously, it makes such an effect. And I think when you have that experience in these TV arenas, mm -hmm. you you know you get to experience some of these things, whereas some yeah. players don't have that. Yeah, you recognize that it's not going to work. And the new felt, the perfect pool balls, all that. It makes some things easier, but it also makes other things more difficult. Okay, should just keep this simple. Not much to think about here. Just keep a little angle on the seven. He didn't keep much angle, though. That should be all right. He'll just punch the cue ball one rail up somewhere around the center of the table. When I say punch, I mean just use a little more force. Oh, he went forward, so he's got to watch out here. Bit of fortune there after contacting the eight. He could have felt on top of the eight and not with an offensive shot at all. Okay, so he's left himself plenty of angle to run the cue ball back and forth for somewhat straight in on the 10. Yeah, 
at perfect speed. So it really hasn't been anything about David's David being comfortable or you know, making mistakes. It's really been opportunity, and he's taken advantage here. And I think it was an important one. I think if he had lost this rack with gone down four nothing with Tyler breaking, ooh, ooh. <laughs> my heart went a little bit yeah. there for him. <laughs> Used every bit of the pocket there. <laughs> Perfect timing for David Alcady, where he draws it to three one against uh, Tyler Steyer. And even though I'm very much unbiased towards whoever wins here, mm -hmm. it's just nice to see an actual close match. And, you know, it, even though it'd be great for Tyler to, you know, go 8-0 as such, but it, it's good to see these long matches and to see such, like, two fantastic players just battle it out for such a prestigious title as such. And there is so much at stake for these two players. Oh, absolutely. Both of them, you, it's quite rare that you get into a situation where the both of them are sort of fighting for their place on the Moscone Cup team mm -hmm. as such. You've got David for Team Europe and obviously Tyler for Team USA. Yeah, and if you really look back, uh, you know, as far as the team aspect, David, uh, I'm not so sure he's ever been on a losing team for Europe um, just because of the run that Europe had. Um, he may have been on one actually in 2000. Would it be nine? 2009, I believe, maybe. God, you're testing my, <laughs> my uh, memory here. Oh, it wasn't even that much yeah, yeah, 2009, although I should know that far back. But, uh, but he's, he, I know he's had some success, that's for sure. So it's here good. we'll see the break off again here in game five. And the one thing you can notice quickly... Uh-oh. Okay, so the one thing you can notice quickly is the difference in consistencies between the two breakers okay um with tyler now breaking off in, his, in the third time for his third time he's really been hitting the balls really solid repeatedly where david had kind of missed him a couple times now he got a kick on the cue ball and al almost a really bad one up in the corner but it's kind of kind of made it to where he can't do a whole lot with the cue ball especially with the five covering up part of the pocket so he's probably going to have to shoot the two from some distance. And this is where if you're playing well, right, mm -hmm. don't overdo it. Meaning just As in get don't that. don't get too overconfident. Yeah, and don't try to squeeze out more of something out of a shot when you don't need to. Just sure. take the longer shot on the two because you're playing great. Most likely if you get that clean shot on the two, you're not going to miss. Now he's falling straight. That's, he's going to have to make not only a nice shot on the two here, but what is going to be a nice shot on the three or play safe. And I think he's immediately looking at the safety option on the three or maybe a two-way shot to where you try to bank the three cross corner and then play a safety as well if you miss. But I wonder after the last game, because he had an option to sh shoot at that six to get at the seven when he played safe. And David made a nice kick shot and ended up stealing the game from him. So I wonder if that's going to... That's playing on his mind exactly, a little bit. He doesn't yeah. want to put himself in that situation again. Yeah. Because we actually, Johan and I talked about it yesterday, that at times um, you have to look, especially we were talking about Tyler, that you have to look to execute before your opponent's going to execute. That's what professionals do. That's what great players do. They kind of squeeze that two ball in I there. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear me just breathe in. It must be. I am I am your casual viewer for Paul. I mean, I love the sport as well. But um, I think that's probably why our events um, are so different as such. Because we try and draw in these you know, casual fans that do go to the pool club to go and hang out with their friends. Because we need to grow this sport. And uh, sure. it's, um, it is exciting to watch. And that's where his fundamental really helped pocketing that too. Uh, if you get a little punchy and you hit it to the pocket like that, it'll stand up. Over the nice long fluid stroke, it really gives you a lot of room for error. And really, as far as those pool fans you're talking about, you never know when you're going to find a champion in one of those. You know, exactly. uh, or a few, actually. I mean, if you think about it, so where's Tyler sort of come from as such? If it wasn't, you know, for like the Moscone last year and his, how he's developed, that must be such a... Um, like a stepping stone or 
um, for other players in USA, especially the young players, for them to see this opportunity. You know, like he's a predator mm -hmm. pro. He's uh, you know got his sponsor, in, and that must be such a a big thing for them to look at. Okay, he's going to play a safety coming two rails on the 10, and that's a nice play. We may see the jump cue here because the guys are so good with the jump cue. He can he can go over the 10 and probably knock the three back up table and try and play a safety. I do love watching the jump shots, I must say. <laughs> well, it's amazing to me how efficient and great the guys have gotten at him. I mean, there's it's something you really have mm -hmm. to think about when you're playing safe against the, the players these days. I just love watching the jump shots in the banks. Oh, yeah. Well, the bank shot's probably one of the prettiest shots in pool yeah. anyway. So. Which is the David Alcady moment mm -hmm. for the Masters. Okay, I think he's called it, but just because in 10 ball, when you're playing the safety, there's no reason not to call something. Uh, because if you do happen to make it... Okay, that's a nice effort. He's going to overhit it a touch, I think... Well, no, I think maybe the seven is, has gotten in between the cue ball and the three. So, again, we're going to see if, as this match goes on and on, if if Tyler has some decisions between offense and defense, if this, like, costs him again this game right here, how that's going to play on his mind. He's looking at a mass A, I think. I like him kicking at this just because the five makes the pocket pretty big. I don't like the rail first behind the seven so much just because it's a, it's not a great angle. It's a very shallow angle. So I think he's got to go one rail kind of straight at the three. He could overcut it off the, he could overcut it off the five ball. Oh, he's going past the side. This is difficult. If he, with top English, I, I fear he's going to miss this. Yeah, he had to know that's going to go long. Um, yeah, he had to go actually be on the other side of the 10 and spin into the 3. So here after, again, like I talked about, like we discussed, uh, going for the safety now and with a great jump shot by David has gotten in ball in hand and kind of turned the tides. Yeah. And you can see he's got sort of a little spring in his step again, David. Yeah, him and Ruiz both, they have a... <laughs> they're a great pairing at the oh, World Cup pool. I love watching yeah, them play they're together. They're very fantastic. animated and they, they're great yeah. for the sport. Very passionate. Oh, yes. Not much to worry about here, especially with ball in hand. He can get close to the five. That's kind of like what I like right there, laying the cue ball, being a right hander, laying the cue ball on the rail. You can reach it easy. You got a lot of options on the six. It goes in the by the nine in the side. It goes in the upper corner. I wouldn't move it out to there. The only reason being is I don't want to get in that zone where I'm stretching a lot. Now, if he goes ahead and moves the cue ball and makes sure he's not stretching, that's okay. He's in good position. But really, we can be with a run out here and, and David breaking off in game number six. We could really be, you know, back on serve, uh, per se, quickly. Yeah, a couple of um, early racks, obviously, for Tyler. But then, like you said, it can all change around here. Okay, so he fell a little short on the six, but still in good position. There shouldn't be any problems. Playing all ball fouls. Okay, so he's going to have to move the cue ball a couple rails here, whether it's draw, low right English drawing two rails or a high ball hitting the, the long rail and then the top rail back down for the eight. 
The thing is, he doesn't want to get thin on the 8. He wants to get fairly heavy on the 8, fairly full. Not only because of possibly missing it, but uh, trying to gain position on the, on the 9 without having to involve the 10. And either route here is okay. I mean, most would draw this ball two rails just because you get position a little quicker. Meaning you fall on the correct line a little a little faster. And that's nice there. So now he's got another decision to make. Do I draw one rail out for the side or do I just draw to this side rail for the nine all the way up in the corner? I feel like I'm learning so much with you, Jeremy. <laughs> it's like you're just literally talking me through it. It's well, fantastic. now all you got to do is learn how to execute it, Emily. <laughs> you become a coach yourself, right? No, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, and that was a comfortable stroke by David. So follow us on ABN Billiards on Facebook. You'll be able to uh, follow the Dream Challenge as well on there. That starts on Monday at eight o'clock in Moscow. And we were talking about you were talking about different score lines in the finals. And my experience is, especially at the pro level, um, you just don't really see a whole. You see some, but you don't see many runaways in the finals for some reason. Uh, it's just. One of them weird things, just like when it goes hill hill, you rarely ever see a break and run. There's always a rollout situation, or balls tie up, or, or some kind of drama. Uh, so now at three to two with David breaking, uh, I think we're going to have a close match. Yeah, he's back in the game here, and it's exactly like you're saying. We had that previously on our World Cup of Pool event um, earlier this year. Um, we obviously changed it to alternate break as well, and I just feel that especially in the last year, the game has improved so much and the players are so strong now in this industry and the matches were all going so tight and it's so good for the viewers. They've got something to watch and, you know, everyone does like to see a break and run and they love to see the 7-0s, the 8-0s, the 9-0s, yeah. but also these are the best players in the world and seeing them um, play against one another in, you know, big tournaments like this and like the World Cup of Paul, it's just fascinating to watch and it's great that this is going to be a long game here. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for it. Yeah, well, I think the players also see uh, the game evolving, uh, the business side of it, um, the tournament side of it, uh, a lot of big tournaments coming. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more on the calendar now. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I think you're going to just see it go up and up and get younger and younger, too. Oh, yeah. Just like every other sport <laughs> in the world that I've watched uh, we were commenting on the other day. I think tennis is the only one that uh, has kind of changed a little bit, but there's only only because you have some phenoms, Nadal, Federer, and the guys that are playing into the 30s where you never saw that 20 years ago. Oh, that's a better break yeah, off there, too. It just felt a lot stronger than yeah. from his previous. Much more square, but he got snookered. It's never easy in this game, is it? No. But... You know, his two wins, he had to battle for those as well. They weren't breaking runs. He had to make some nice kick shots or a jump shot. So that'll be very satisfying. And, and sometimes fortune can change as the match goes. You kind of earn it, uh, earn the fortune to change, kind of. You may have to roll out to some type of kick shot here, though. I'm not so sure he can really afford to give up a piece of the one. Or even a jump, maybe, for a jump safety. Uh, roll out behind the five, maybe, to where you can jump the ball and knock, kind of knock the cue ball down table and maybe contain the one. Very difficult rollout situation, especially in the ten ball, because the one gets in a, a really uh, nice position a lot of times uh, to where it's so very difficult to roll out. I think he has to roll out somewhere around the 4-9 and use the 2 for like a rail first or something like that, maybe. I know the rail first is very, is makeable, but it's out there a ways. I think if he rolls out to some type of safety, he's going to take way the worst of it. Is he just going to kick at the ball himself? 
I think he could roll out to a better place to take the kick shot on. Okay, he's going to roll out to just an edge on the one. The thing about this is you're rarely getting it back. If he leaves a little bottom piece of the one, I think Tyler will take it on for a safety somewhere behind the five with the cue ball, something like that. Ooh. So we'll see. And especially with the alternate break format, I mean, you're supposed to play every game the same, no matter what the situation is. That's okay. the, that's the like you should take that out of your mind as such. Exactly right. Okay. But really thinking about it, with a three-two lead, he's supposed to try and execute the safety off of David's break, and you know, instead of let David execute, especially with the lead, him getting to break next. I mean, there is a little bit of play gamesmanship, I guess you might call it, in that situation. Ooh. Didn't expect that. Um, and what's that? Is that just a, a bit of sloppiness? Yeah, he caught the 10 going in. He, and, and, you know, the new felt, if he tried to put English on it, sometimes, like if you hit the left side of the ball, it curves to the right first before it comes back. Well, if he didn't really account for that, he kind of deflected into the 10, it appears. So a few things turning a little bit this match early. And we say early, it's only a race to eight. I so know. <laughs> we're almost at the halfway point, really. <laughs> well, you see the congestion there with the four and the nine. So definitely still some work. There's, uh, you wouldn't call this an easy out by any means. And I'm really curious how he's going to play the four. There's a 4-6 combo that I think is a bit easier than the 4-9. The 4-9 is really off angle. And with no shot clock, I think I would have had to figure this plan out before I shot the 1. I can just shout out a shot clock if you want. <laughs> I can just shout out the beats. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Uh, for the Dream Challenge, we're playing with a 30-second shot clock. Oh, good. But also 30 seconds after the break. So not the 60 seconds after? Not the after. 60 oh, either. Blimey, so. that's going to be tough. So he went for the breakout there off of the two, and I, I can't blame him. Um, now he's a little, really got a little bit of angle here. He's probably going to have to play maybe this three in the upper corner and bounce out for a four nine combination. He could roll it in the side as well. I would rather be a little closer to the four nine myself because when he shoots it, he's the four is going to have some speed on it. So you don't have to shoot it from too far away. And he certainly doesn't want to have to shoot it with a big cut on the ball. So I think he'll shoot the three in the corner just just so he can get out to the center of the table a little a little easier. He's looking at for the four on the side, really. It's not a bad play, actually. Just talking yourself in and out of <laughs> thinking there, Jeremy. <laughs> well, these guys see it better than we do, that's for sure. Oh, he caught the five, so he's going to need a bit of fortune, and he got it. Definitely never intended on catching that orange five, and now he's really falling perfect for the four in the corner. He's got a nice little angle to fall on the five in the same corner, I believe. So for the most part here, Emily, it's all about, uh, how you say it, England, England pot, potting the ball. Potting or, the ball. And snooker, <laughs> that's how they say it, a potting, potting. <laughs> Well, yeah. I can try and put my American accent on for you, Jeremy, but it's not great. Yeah, pull, it's, we call it pocketing the ball. So you can see maybe not 100% just yet, no. David, uh, but trying to settle in. And what a timeout he took at 3 0. Um, pretty smart. Uh, so, how many timeouts are they allowed for? Just this one. Just, just one throughout the whole thing? Throughout the match, yeah. Okay, so you got choose it wisely mm -hmm. but I think it was necessary yeah I agree all right that was a little cleaner strike may have to use the bridge here or an extension on the back of his cue he doesn't play with an extension he may use both the extension and the bridge it just depends now he's going to go for the bridge and I, I agree with that
All right, he's got to be aggressive with this, though. Doesn't want to end up short on the nine. That's the only real fault. A nice shot. That didn't look aggressive to me. Maybe my terms of aggressive is very different. To well, yours. what I mean is, with the pool players, no. But sometimes when you get the crutch, you can kind of like cinch the ball a little bit. You okay. can kind of like uh, make oh. it as easy on you as possible. I wish there was a video yeah. camera yeah. in here right now. <laughs> you trying to explain what you were just doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like when you're stretched, like or over a ball, you kind of simplify things a little bit, and sometimes okay. you just don't get through the ball. Uh, oh, oh, still. Vamos, damn it, David Alcade. Mm -hmm. Did you say vamos? I did say vamos. That is <laughs> as much Spanish you're gonna get. <laughs> well, Three or? Oh. Yeah, me being from Texas, I know a bit, and Tyler Steyer is gonna is he take his, his time out. out. Yes, at three apiece. So what's it, so obviously this is the final of the Kremlin Cup, race to eight. What's your thoughts on finals and the race two numbers? There's obviously some talk that even in some of our events, you know, we'll do race to eight in a final, uh, race to nine. And sometimes, you know, people want to see the longer race twos in finals mm -hmm. as such. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, with the, like the US Open, for instance, um, with the bigger fields, I like the little bit longer race in the final. Um, some of the like the World Pool Masters, which yeah. is a, what, now a 32 man or 16 still. Oh no, not 32. Okay, 16, no, it's, uh, it's it's been 16, um, I know and it, now I'm, it's increased to 24 players. That's right. With some getting uh, stage two by a past, right? Yeah. So yeah. we have we haven't actually announced the World Pool Masters for next year yet, um, but uh, for this year we did have eight of them come through as qualifiers as such. So you get the U.S. Open champion, which was Jason Shaw. Um, you get the world champion and they go straight to, there's a preliminary round and mm -hmm. then they go straight into the next section of the tournament, which I think is great because, you know, you should be rewarded for performance. Yeah, yeah. of course. And, you know, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a seeding as such. And like I said, these are the best players in the world and that's what the World Pool Masters is turning into now. Mm -hmm. It's turning into the best players. And it just relayed that um, earlier in March when we had the tournament that all of the matches were all close. We were overrunning every session. Mm -hmm. Every staff member hated what was going on because <laughs> they were, we were overrunning. I loved it because obviously I'm, I'm yeah. a lover of the, of the game. But um, it's just great to see that, you know, these players are getting stronger and the match is getting better. And uh, yeah, it's, but it's always tough to increase the race to for the finals because you do have broadcast commitments sure. and, you know, timings and things like that. Um, but US Open, I really enjoyed because I loved seeing the race to 11. Yeah, and um, that's what I think with those type of titles, with the 256 players, I, I like the longer in the finals. I think it's deserving. And with the smaller uh, fields, uh, yeah. the, the, I think you can stick to the races to eight, and I think it's very satisfying. Uh, it's a bit more of a sprint, but that's okay. Um, you know, there's all kinds of formats. You know, I, I think eventually one day, uh, for like the, the, the larger field tournaments, we may go to like two out of three races to six, something like that. Okay. I think just because you got drama right from the get, you yeah. have a guy that can lose a set with some misfortune and get it back with a start, starting fresh in set two. You know, I think that's the format that may end up being the most successful one day. Okay. You know, but who knows? Yeah, who who knows? We keep uh, mixing it up and just changing things up to just keep it fresh and, yeah. you know, different for the players. Well, and also, you know, you you know, just like golf, you know, there's there's golf courses that set up for certain players and, other, and then they go to the next venue and it mm -hmm. sets up for other players. So I think variety helps to where if you had it the same all the time, I think that upper tier would be winning just a little too often. So. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. And it's also playing conditions as such. You've obviously mentioned like the, the felt quite a lot with the TV lighting mm -hmm. as well. When you step into a completely different arena, you know, you sit in here and it's a very, it's more of a snooker type audience, you know, a bit more, um, I say respectful because our pool fans are still respectful, but mm -hmm. you step into something like the Moscone Cup and it is a completely different atmosphere and you have to obviously adapt to the different situations. But that's what makes these players so special. Sure. And like we talked about on the ride over that, you know, you have certain players that you know can handle that heat. Yes. So now when it comes to selection process, uh, you know, you have to think about things like that. 
Now, great break off there. Now, what's the three ball going to do? It's okay, I think. So a chance to get the lead back here with a nice starter on the one. So what's Tyler saying to himself in that time out there? Well, um, I wouldn't doubt Johan was with him during the timeout, <laughs> so maybe Johan had a little bit more to say than, than what's, Tyler. Okay, did. okay. So what's Johan saying to Tyler right now? Probably stay aggressive. Um, okay. Keep doing what you're doing. Maybe a little bit of what we talked about. If it comes down to that 50-50, unless you really don't like it, maybe maybe go aggressive. Uh, try and take it away. Execute before he does. Um, just a couple of simple things. I mean, it's not. Tyler can handle a lot. He's a young man, but he's uh, he's pretty strong-minded. Yeah. Okay, watch out for the cue ball getting elevated over the eight. That could pose some problems. Okay, he's got the left side of the cue ball. Doesn't really have the bottom side of the cue ball, though. So this is going to be a little bit touchy, you might say. And really a bit of an error because you can see the table, how open it is. It's a really nice, doable run out. Uh, as long as he contained the cue ball. So he may still be able to strike down on this, but the problem is when you only have one side of the ball, okay, and you have to strike down, if you're not aware of it, this ball can be hit thick and to the point because you deflect a little bit more. Cue ball deflects. Okay, nice shot. Watch out, though. It's got a lot of speed. He should be okay. A lot of people don't realize how difficult that little shot was. He does make it look very easy, I must mm -hmm. say. Okay, so this is, uh, I think, a kind of in between. Can he hold the cue ball there, or does he have to go to, to the rail? And this is where his fundamental really helps, meaning uh, he can handle a little angle and kind of hold the cue ball there just because the length of the stroke. it out a little bit <laughs> and got over the nine a little bit as well so kind of fighting through this rack but uh, getting it done and like I said probably his last match yesterday was his most solid match of the tournament, which I think was going to bode well for today. But so far today, he's played great. I mean, he played some percentages that didn't get him some wins with the safeties, but that's a bit more of David taking it away from him, I think. Ah. Talk me through that one, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, that was just a... A bit unnecessary, I think. Uh, like the what fives. you mentioned earlier? Yeah, the like overcomplicating the shot when you don't exactly. need to? Exactly. The okay. five's over the pocket. Uh, the, you can see the five over the next pocket. There's no reason to, when you hit the ball so hard, yeah. if it's not necessary, you're shrinking the pocket. And any miss hit, uh, you have no room for error as far as a miss hit on the cue ball. So really going away from his advantage, which is the smoother stroke, uh, which opens the pocket. So our first mistake, or, or at least it was the obvious first mistake, obvious yeah, mis yeah, exactly. mistake, yeah, definitely. Unforced error, you might say, I guess. Mm. And at a crucial time, 3-3 and David breaking off in the next game. Now David's got to pay attention getting from the 5 to the 7 only because of where the 8's at. I think the 8 goes easily all the way up in the corner, though, so he could play short side position on the 8. If it's froze to the rail, you don't really want to do that. But I think uh, I think that's what we're going to see. Now, I may look at playing the 7 in the side right here myself. At least go look at it. And that's I think that's what he's going to do. It, it really minimizes the cue ball movement. It's more of a guarantee as far as the angle from the 7 to the 8. And you don't involve the 10. That's a good one, too. You don't involve the 10 get to make becoming a problem. I think what happened to Tyler there is he made a real nice shot 
but it was a little more necessary on the three to go the rail and back out. He, he needed to do that because of the angle. And hitting it so well with that speed he hit it with, it might have carried him on to the four saying, well, let me just do that again. I see. So, but that's a bit of experience. Yep. that quite a bit um, kind of surprising really because the center of the table that little angle offers a lot easier position from the nine to the ten when you get more straight in it's harder to move the cue ball because you don't have that easy angle to come off the object ball so he's having the cue ball cleaned here See a bit of frustration with Tyler there, mm -hmm. can't you? Yeah, he's got to leave that behind. I know we always say that, but it's so... It must well, be so much harder. Than <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like when you can't sleep, it's hard to sh shut that brain yeah, off. Of course. Enough, so. okay, he's going to have a little bit of a cut on the 10, and that's from getting so heavy on the 9. Um, one he should still handle. And, but we've seen a few misses on the 10 in this tournament. Not so much by David or Tyler, but, but just some really great players. It's like what we were talking about earlier, the, um, the level of play within these last six months or so has just improved so much as the players are developing. Oh, yeah. Especially with bigger tournaments, more tournaments. 4-3 to David Alcady. Yeah, it's, it was three all in a row. you Spanish fans watching, <laughs> vamos, vamos, David. Riva, Riva. <laughs> andale, andale. If you want to try and teach us some more Spanish, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to mislead you, but yeah, three in a row to open by Tyler Steyer and, and a four in a row coming back for David now breaking off in game eight. And, and I also think the training part of the game is guys are starting to recognize that that extra eyes really help, just like every other sport in the world. There's quarterback coaches. There's yep. every every golfer has their own swing coach, and I think those things, uh, the whole package, is uh, and, and motivation as well. Uh, as motivation really made, is yeah, key. Yeah, has made the players so much better. And technology, you know, the technology, the equipment, uh, everything's you can get more dialed into your style. You can pick your equipment behind your style a little bit more in your technique. Yeah. Like everything is developing mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. God, he looks like he has the proper ump, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's not a happy camper just right now, that's for sure. But he's just, you know, he's got to let it go. And just like David we talked about earlier, he's got whatever it is that he says to himself uh, to get him back uh, mentally strong. Oh, David hitting the break much better, so. It's just completely changed from the first couple of racks, isn't it? It sure has, and now a very nice starter on the one and a very doable rack here. Yeah, much better, much more square hit on the one. So how's this rack looking when we looks, go to the overhead here? Yeah, it looks good. It's, the one to the two is very, very simple. The three to the five is really about it. Um, he needs to get tidy on the two. That'll be somewhere around the center of the table. And that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And the same thing here, center of the table, because the five's not all the way back to the, to the cushion on the other end. So he doesn't have to move the cue ball a ton from the three to the five. You can handle a lot of little angles here. Uh, he ended up a little light, so that tells me he won't come back so close to the five. He'll just come across the table and take a little distance on the five ball. I think, anyways. Because the six, I mean, you don't want to get too thin on the five ball, but there's no reason to take a big chance here trying to get so close to the five either, I think. He may, he may come past the side. Oh, he did. 
And now he's gotten that thin stretched angle on the five because he had to put more speed on the cue ball trying to come past. So now he's made this a little more difficult. If he just lays the cue ball up over on this other end of the table more straight in on the five, things are pretty easy. But does it also depend on, obviously some players have different techniques as to how they play and sometimes oh. they personally have like a better shot as such that they may be stronger at than like the general consensus on how to do yeah. it yeah absolutely and and some players want to be more full but closer to the ball to where they don't miss the object ball as much but they have to pound the cue ball a little bit more for position whereas like me i like to i, I like a little more natural angle okay. for position i don't mind a little bit of a longer shot so especially on the table like these that usually the event tables the the pockets they're tight but the conditions are so good that they don't play that tough so I like what he did there, though, keeping it simple and just accepting the shot on the six. I want, I'm interested to see how he plays this because if he tries to go with a low ball and avoid the eight, I think it makes the six a little missable. He may just come one rail into the eight. The eight's a nice, nice little ball right there to slow the cue ball down. Uh, he's hitting low English, okay, so that means he's coming back. So he's got to have nice speed control. And, of course, like I said, I think it makes the six a little tougher. Oh, he hit it great. But did he overhit? No, he's all right. So David Alcade, a very confident look now. He compared, does, yeah. Compared to earlier, right? It's just switched entirely. It's funny how in such a sh short game as such that it can just change so quickly. Yeah, just imagine... Uh, Playing that longer race to 11 or 13 or 15, even how many times it can switch. Yeah, back and that. Forth. Yeah. So is he coming back for the side? No, just two rails for the corner. Good decision, keeping it simple. Now he wants an angle though because the nine doesn't pass the ten. Does he have to fall all the way down for a nine-ten combination or the nine in the side? And he's got a bit of an angle. comfortable as, yeah. as every shot is made and that's another thing that Marcus Shamat if you're watching that <laughs> you have to pay attention to through down three nothing in a final keeping your composure um, that's huge because composure is all what Moscone Cup is made of oh, of course that that crowd in there I'm not even playing on the table and it gives me goosebumps so God knows how the players feel when they're out there having to actually make a shot yeah, I used to love it myself. I loved it. Yeah. There wasn't much fear. I mean, of course, it wasn't all. It didn't always go our way, but. Yeah, for a long time, I may add. <laughs> well, I played seven and we won five, so that was pretty good. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, for you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the more recent ones, maybe not. No, and uh, my wife and I traveled to Vegas for 2015 and 17 to watch, and, mm -hmm. and, and that, it was painful. Um, I'll be honest, it was painful on the sidelines. Uh, I felt for the guys. There's was, nothing you can do either. Yeah, I mean, you know, I knew all of them, of course, and tried to give them support and do whatever I could or, you know, whatever they asked me, I tried to help them. But, but yeah, it, it was painful. And uh, I'm glad to see that, that uh, things changed last year, and I hope they continue continue that way of course me too jeremy me too even though i remain very very unbiased yeah well we all want <laughs> i don't it. mind we, who wins i yeah, just want course. it to be nice and close and i just want those 1800 spectators to enjoy what they're watching yeah and that's the what was so great about last year i thought that not only did we win we want we needed that the the cup needed that um especially Americans coming back needed to that. vegas as well with yeah. the cup yeah. you guys but the level of play it wasn't like we just scrapped across the finish line and everybody was bloodied up, nobody played well. <laughs> it was a high level of play, and that's another thing that I expect this year. So it's 5-3 to David Alcady, Tyler breaking. Yeah, he's got to he's, he's talk about bleeding. He's got to stop the bleeding here, that being Tyler Stein. He just needs to clear his head. Just. Yeah, is he going to get a shot here? Is he gonna, the one going to end up on... Uh, 
So things have definitely changed here in Moscow this Saturday afternoon. Kiwal got a little kick, the one got a kick, and they end up pretty much marrying each other right there on the end rail. I don't think he can make this one. I think he's got to play safe. I, I could be wrong, but I think he's got to run the cue ball and let the one bank back underneath the, what is that, the pink four it's near? Yes. Kind of draw the cue ball straight down behind the ten. Let the one come across. You can miss cue on these types, so you got to watch it. Uh, it's got to go. And he's not going to be happy with that. He didn't leave an offensive shot, but you can see a big wall of balls. Uh, so David's going to bank the one down table and most likely bring the cue ball to the right. And a lot of amateur players would say, well, that's safe. Well, against the pros, of course, they're not going offensive, but you're giving up the table pretty much. You're giving up the advantage. Oh, and there she is. <laughs> I'm loving being here in Moscow. My <laughs> first ever Kremlin Cup is it is fantastic being here. Matchroom multi sports finest. We're only missing Abigail, huh? I know. Yeah. She's actually going out to Vegas next week to she's got lots of Moscone Cup meetings. Okay. Inundated with them. We've got we're we're actually looking at increasing the um, size of the arena, the oh, seating. Sweet. Because Good. we're going to be sold out. I'd say we'll be sold out in a couple of weeks' time for each session. So might start looking at increasing it. There you seeing, go. Or just keep it sold out. <laughs> well, just increase it. That would be all right. Now, he's got an option here, a couple options. He could go somewhat offensive and defensive at the same time. Again, uh, this is the position at, what is it now, five to three? Yeah. Uh, this is the position to where... I wouldn't take many chances. Things are going your way. I wouldn't take much of a chance at miss hitting something and, and kind of waking Tyler, Tyler up uh, with a starter. He's taken his time out as well, hasn't he, Tyler? Mm -hmm. And that's that wall of balls. There were a lot of options, but I think he may have left him a piece here. Yes, he did. Not an easy shot, though. No, right. and maybe not even an offensive shot. Uh, yeah, he, he can get at it, though. So, again, he didn't get the snooker. But he, like you said, he's going to, if Tyler does go for the make, it's going to be one he earns. We are missing James and, and James and Neil as well. <laughs> They are brilliant. Um, I don't want to break it to the USA players yet, but they are going to have the security in the rooms with you guys. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, oh, okay. I like those guys a lot. A little thick. Okay, he's going to need a bit of fortune. Uh, he did get the snooker, but he may have left a real first shot or possibly a jump shot if, if David can reach it. Not so sure being right-handed and not the tallest of men. No, so. we could see the what it looks like on the overhead here. Yeah, I think he's, but it's a pretty makeable rail first, and he can hit it nice and easy to hold position for the two in the up in the corner, and the three's near. So, all about this one ball. I'll tell you, I was talking, thinking about Neil and James and. They're both really funny guys, but they get, when they're together, I mean, it's like tenfold funny. And they're really good, <laughs> really fun to be around. If anyone's wondering, that is uh, the Team Europe and Team USA security bodyguards. Yeah. <laughs> if you're yeah. wondering who Neil and James are. Yeah, they do a lot of security for the boxing and uh, many events uh, yeah. for Matchroom. They work on every one of our events just purely for the players. And I think one thing that we're trying to work on, especially in pool at the moment, to, in comparison to other sports like gymnastics and netball, that the players, they are the celebrities. They are the, the ones that people come and see. And they are the ones that, you know, shouldn't be so accessible as such. And it's nice that they can have this security around them. And, you know, to make them more, uh, I say, more A-listers as such. Yeah. Because they are within this game. Well, that and they have a job to do. 
the players have a job to do in all exactly. those sports. Uh, they need to keep focused, mm -hmm. and this is and it's important, you know, to have things like security in there. And it's definitely something that we've been looking at more recently with our events. Now he overdrew this ball quite some bit. He wanted to get a, make sure he had an angle, but now he's got quite a bit of angle, so he's got to he's got to find a path for the cue ball. I think with a little right spin, he can get by the uh, by the eight. And if he bumps the eight, this could, may not be the worst things in the world. I don't think he'll hit it hard enough to scratch. But the issue could be, am I going to get behind that green six? It's 5-3 here to mm -hmm. David Alcady against Tyler Style. Yeah, and David will Race be breaking eight. off in the next game as well. Whew. I think he can go by the eight. I really do. Yeah, just like that. And he got somewhat straight here. If he doesn't feel like he can cheat the pocket and come two rails out, this could be a touchy position shot trying to draw into position uh, because with that angle. But now he's hitting high ball, so that means he can come two rails out. Just hitting the four a little to the left side of the pocket like that. Oh, he put a lot on it, though. Okay. I was worried he might get elevated over that eight, and that would have been a problem. I love how you go into like the mindset of each player. <laughs> so you don't have like one that you're picking from. You sort of go into their head on whoever's playing that shot. Yeah, well, the American players, especially, I, I kind of know them pretty well, better, you know. Yeah. And so, and David as well. Also, I've been around David. I first saw him in Vegas actually. Um, before he turned professional, he played in a big uh, national amateur event in Vegas. Some, ooh, had to be two, two. 2000, 2001, maybe? Oh, years ago. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago, yeah. Showing my age. <laughs> but he obviously was a very young man at the time. And I don't think Tyler's going the other way, but David certainly seems to be getting stronger with every shot. He has just turned this around, hasn't he, David? It's just mm -hmm. looks, his composure, his as he's walking around the table, it's just changed significantly. Yeah, and again, it wasn't from mistakes from Tyler. Uh, I mean, there has been some, of course, but the first couple racks really were, he was on the fence. Do I do I go offensive? Do I go safety? And he elected to, to go safety, and David made some really nice kick shots to get out of it and squeeze the, fir the first few games off and then uh, kind of get the ball rolling, per se. What big swings. Uh, three three games in a row for Tyler, and now what is six games in a row for David Alcade? About to go 6-3 here in a race to eight final at the Kremlin Cup. I mean, you've had a, an interesting match here, guys. Mm -hmm. And would you say, so, for instance, in matches like this with Tyler against someone like David Alcade, is Tyler's kind of weakness the fact that he is quite inexperienced against a player like David in these situations? Yeah, yeah, or... Yeah, more lacking than a weakness, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That that because he definitely has, in my opinion, a few things that are of higher quality than David, even at a young age. Um, that being, like I said, the technique, the break, a few things, um, but definitely the experience is is where he's a little short between the two players. And that may be kind of like those decisions when it came to do I play safe or or, or uh, do I go aggressive? Do um, obviously maybe a silly question, but in matches like this, are the players thinking about how their opponent is going to play a shot? I know that you mentioned earlier that they should just doesn't matter what the format is, doesn't matter who they're playing, they should just play their game. But obviously, it must come into their oh, their absolutely, yeah. There's certain players you know things like when we used to play Efren. You know, certain types of kick shots, certain types of rollouts. Uh, the jump cue is very big now. So, like a guy against a guy like Fetter, never going to roll out to a jump shot. Uh, not only is he not going to give it back, but he's going to perform so well at it. Or if I'm playing safe, I might play a different type of safety according to my opponent. But
but as far as when I'm running the balls, there is no difference. When I'm doing my show, it has no problem. You know, nothing yeah, to do with the opponent. So his breaks are just getting stronger, is he? Yeah, they are, and he's got a nice starter on the three to where he can draw over to short side on the four, and really another open table. I don't really see any issues at all. The five's over the ten a bit, but and the nine's on the side rail, but. And he's made, did he make four here or three on the break? At least three. Three, yeah. He's got a nice angle, though. You don't want to play short side a lot, but when it's so natural, no reason to hit this hard and come back over. Oh, he held it for, I didn't realize he could hold the ball for there. So a little stretch here. But real natural position coming two rails right towards the five. He's not rushing here, David, or is, do you just think he's just comfortable in his surroundings now? Yeah, and I've seen him pick up the pace when things start to go well for him. Yeah. Two rails out for the seven. He got a little bit of an angle. Okay, he's all right. Eight being very uh, open in the middle of the table, so he's got to have he's going to have some concern though, just because of where the nine's at. So he'll draw behind this, I think, two rails, playing the eight in the same side pocket. I think the key to this is he can handle a lot on the eight as long as he's off the rail with the cue ball. If he has the entire cue ball when he shoots the eight, I don't think it'll be any problem getting on the nine. Like here, he's got a lot of angle, but there's so much open position on the table that he can move the cue ball into position on the nine, I believe, with no problem. I'm not so sure he can go one rail and not hit the 10, though, so he may have to draw off of this a couple rails. Um, kind of swinging the cue ball out of what will be the lower left corner when you get the monitor back. He would like to go with just a high ball here and come one rail just above the nine, but I think he may contact the 10. So here he's going to have to come two rails out of this lower left corner pocket. Now he may end up some distance away from the nine, but if he ends up straight, he's okay. Oh, he played four rails. Oof. And that is the I'm distance sweating. I was talking about. <laughs> I'm sweating that then. Yeah, he missed his mark on that top rail by a good diamond. He wanted to hit much closer to the middle of the end rail. But the good thing is if he can settle himself, uh, you know, just make a nice fluid stroke here. The pocket's pretty big from this angle and natural position on the 10. That's if it all goes to plan. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, he missed it. I must Not have just called it. By a little bit, but man. Well, the opportunity that was needed. Wow, that was surprising. And not just, of course, the miss was surprising, but it wasn't, wasn't very close either. be a costly one for David there's Tyler's probably going to take this rack and, and breaking yeah next I'm going to be looking at a six four if Tyler wins this rack here yeah and we talked about some early misses getting in the player's head but if there's a any type of miss that would really get in your head it's a, a you know a nine ball to get on the hill and have many you know two two or three games to break the balls to win the title That's 6 4 to David Alcady. Tyler just took that last rack there. You can see he took a lot of time on that last ball. He's obviously mm -hmm. just getting, um, getting back into it, and he's up to break now as well. And 
It's weird. Somehow, we talked about it earlier, somehow, some way, the matches in the finals <laughs> seem to you go down never, to the wire. You never predict them, can you? Yeah, and I wonder if that had a bit to do, because he did, like you mentioned, he picked up his pace a yeah. little bit. and uh, It just felt like he was rushing through it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I looked at it. Oh, no, you're part. exactly right. And you know David, too. You've seen him play plenty. Uh, but that wasn't, yeah. Ugh. Missed that one by quite some distance. And looking at Tyler right there when he shot the 10, looked pretty comfortable releasing the cue, so that's a good sign. Sometimes you get a little tight, a little short, a little timid. Uh, David's got a lot of experience, so with opportunity, you expect him to shake off that miss. But the thing is, he may not get it, you know. Well, exactly, with how Tyler's been playing, yeah. he may not actually get that opportunity. You have no idea how this is going to go down now, Jeremy. Right. And uh, misses like that, sometimes you're punished. Like next time David breaks the balls, you may not come away with a shot. Might get kissed in by the cue ball, might get kissed in the, in the pocket. We don't hope for any of that stuff, of course, but just tell you how, how it does work sometimes. Now, Tyler really hasn't backed off the break much at all. Really hitting it. Uh, they hit a little high. I didn't. Uh, he's going to get the six down. Okay, so he's going to get a shot on the one. I'm not sure it's offensive. I think it goes by the two, but it might be pretty tight. Yeah, it goes. Thing is, can he reach it? And is he dealing with a scratch? when it comes to the cue ball. So he may, if he can reach it and he decides to go offensive, he's gonna have to put some bottom, bottom English or can he get, okay, so uh, he can beat the scratch evidently because he's going with a high ball. I thought the scratch was a bit of a worry. Now he hit it nice, nice shot. Nice. So after that one, he should run these. And of course, there's work. And then just like that, if he runs this racket, just go 6-5, just yeah. within the blink of an eye. Yeah, you were looking at 7-3 and on the hill. You know, and as commentators and me being a player, we talk about what these guys should do, meaning the, the balls are there to run, but we don't ever want to take away that how difficult everything still is. They have to execute. Uh, a, lot, a lot of guys can, or a lot of fans can maybe uh, think the game's too easy by some of the things we say, but that's just how great these guys are. They sh he should run these these out, but again, there's there's work to be done. It's like what I said earlier, when I um, when Tyler made quite a tough shot, for me, he made it look so easy as mm. well. And, you know, just watching things can look obviously a lot easier, but when you're out there, you're up against an opponent like, for instance, David Alcady as well. There's so many conditions that are just factoring against you, aren't there? Yeah. And the heart rate is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Uh, I think I think they were considering actually putting uh, heart monitors on us on the players for the uh, for the dream challenge. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I, I'd, I'd love to do that um, for one of our events definitely sometimes it's just it's that awkward moment it's obviously um it can be uncomfortable for some of the players and sure. you know so it's that that tough um yeah you have to have the players that agree to it like on golf they did it for like two seasons they had a group of players that would agree to it was pretty interesting to see how well these guys could perform with their heart, heart jacked racing. up to 180 <laughs> beats per minute or something like that. I mean, it was crazy. The best I've ever seen was when we used to do the poker mm -hmm. and you'd sit there and you'd be watching a hand go and you've got one of these guys just absolutely bluffing mm -hmm. the other guy and his heart rate is just going through the roof or you've mm -hmm. got um, someone who's got the best hand and their heart rate and they're sweating and it's, oh, yeah. it's super, super interesting when you, know, you bring things like that into it. So, you know, maybe we should start doing it. And Paul, I know that some of the some promoters and some tournaments do it and perhaps we should follow suit. Yeah, it's an interesting thing though, because it's such a delicate sport in so many ways and to have your 
your heart rate up there. Okay, so I think he's fallen in a real nice position on the seven to be able to draw the cue ball just a little bit back for the eight. He'd like to get again, not too thin on the eight. That way he doesn't have to involve the 10 when trying to play position from the eight to the nine. So he wants to come back some probably 18 inches, something like that. And he can afford a little more than that, but at least about 16 to 18 inches with the cue ball. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay, he can kind of just hold this or he can come to the rail and out. Looks to me like he's probably coming to the rail and out for a little bit of an angle on the nine, not much. Got quite a bit. Nothing wrong with that. You can just hit this with a little bit of like middle left English. Come right across the top of the 10 for the 10 in the same pocket. Could play it with inside if he wanted. But I think he can get away with just like I said a little middle left English. And he's hitting downward so he's going to kind of drag it with the left. Trying to make sure he clears the 10. run to make it six to five and these guys are both out of their timeout so we're going to play on from this position and it's just just touching base on obviously the players that are sort of at this level um it's it's really actually quite impressive when you look at these type of players and the level of concentration that must go into these matches and like we were saying earlier when you're watching at home it must be easy to shout at the TV and say oh why have you just done that he's just dogged the shot but for instance it is tough at this level and like and like what we were saying there are get so many players that are coming through now and developing and Tyler is a perfect example of that where you know a year ago he was developing through and now like you know David must be obviously it's a tough match for him and uh it is just super impressive as to how these players are and even how Team USA have sort of got through the Kremlin Cup for this year. You know, they all had really strong matches and they're going to go on and play the Dream Challenge. I mean, you mentioned that Tyler's been out of the country, went to China along mm -hmm. with Shane and Billy and I think Corey as yeah. well. And they've come over to Russia and then, you know, they've probably got to go back to America to go and play another tournament after oh, yeah, that. And yeah. they are away for a long amount of time. And it takes dedication. They're away from home. They're out of their routines. It is tough for them. Yeah, it's easy to get flat, too. It's easy to get kind of not, you know, they're all motivated. Don't get me wrong. They're wanting to win tournaments. But if things don't go your way, kind of like right here on this one ball, yep. um, it's easy to, you might say, get in a, uh, a real flat kind of okay it just wasn't my turn so but they definitely should get a lot of credit I sometimes don't think they get the credit they deserve the players yeah. and even like a you know from people like myself that they put their sweat and blood into this mm -hmm. this game and it is their life and uh, certainly at this kind of level that they're participating at it is just so high and there are so many great players out there now and it's just showing in all of these recent tournaments yeah, you you have to be aware right from 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 the get from jump jump start, uh, and also you know just for the fans out there, just imagine if you're one of these guys and you had to sleep last night, oh. knowing you're in the final yeah. of the event. You know, you, you could, I think the fans could imagine that that they wouldn't probably get a wink of sleep. No. That would be very difficult, and these guys have to do it day in day out. Exactly. Of course, they're a little more used to it now, and, and they understand that they they're must, supposed to be here but and they must have certain routines like for instance if you know we're running an event as such you you know you like to go to the gym in the morning and you mm -hmm. like to get your head clear and things like that and some things just might not go right for these players and they might you know have a bad day as such and it really must affect them quite 
bad and it's oh, like yeah. they carry that into their next match and mentally it is tough for these players certainly at this level I would I think he needs to kick and stick right here meaning is he going to try and make the rail first I don't know if that's really possible if it is I like it but otherwise he has to kick to the side rail with a little draw English try and catch the one full and, and knock it down table and use the five as a blocker I think he going offensive row first. I think he's asking a lot. I like him hitting down on the ball. Oh, he is going to go for it. Okay. And uh, from that camera angle, it makes me think there's a little more room in there to do it. Oh, great shot. Great shot. I wanted to clap myself here, but mm -hmm. under the table, Pat. You're loud. You're loud. <laughs> okay. I like the clap more than the snap of the fingers. Oh, God, it's so old, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, in America, we don't do much of the snap of the fingers. so. No, you guys just go, go Team USA. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, in Europe, they just shout that extension. Oh, it drives me crazy. After the Moscone Cup, I went to sleep every night for probably two weeks just hearing that really high screech of extension, extension in yeah. my head. <laughs> I couldn't drown it out. Okay, so David Alcady uh, in position again to get on the hill. And as we talk about it, on the hill, meaning getting to where he needs one game to win the match. He's going to have to play some position from the five to the six, though. And there's definitely options. He can run the cue ball. He can draw the cue ball off the five, a, a couple cushions. And the seven's near the spot, so he doesn't have to, like, go back and forth too much for position from the six to the seven either. Where he's fallen on the four, he's probably going to play more of the draw stroke from the five to the six. It's funny how you've got all of these things going through your head as the player that's out there. You're thinking all of the shot selection, what you've got coming up, and there is so much that is going through your head. And it's just like what we were saying earlier about heart rate. It just oh, must yeah. be so intense for them. And then you have to execute it. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah, not only have to make a decision. Now, he's gotten way too flat on this, meaning a little too full. So, again, he's got to pound the ball more. So anytime you have to pound the ball more, you you sacrifice touch, meaning coming down the table, your speed control isn't going to be as good. It's almost like rolling a ball real hard down the table or just rolling it gently. You're always going to have a little better touch when you get to go a little more mild at it. But that was a nice shot there. So I don't really see any misses here. Of course, we didn't anticipate any in what was game number 10. When we saw a big miss on the nine. Yep. So let's not get ahead. I won't get ahead of myself, excuse <laughs> me. Okay, he'll just come up for the seven in the opposite corner. Did he get there? Oh, my. Mm. And that was kind of from guiding the cue ball a little bit there. He had a lot of room, and I don't know what the worry was as far as going above the seven. And it certainly wasn't the rail, in my opinion. He's kind of having a touch of the rail. But now he, I think he may have to play a cross-side bank. That was just under hit a good foot, foot and a half maybe. So as soon as I open my trap, uh, <laughs> there we go. It's normally what happens. Yeah. And this is where we've got that 50-50 situation. He can maybe play a safety, but I think David will go offensive whether it be a cross-side bank or a thin cut in the corner. I think he's got to go for the cross-side bank, I believe. Yeah. Now we'll see if he plays it with that nice medium speed or if he gets a little jumpy trying to slam it in. If he tries to slam it in, I think he could use, lose some accuracy. I think it's more of a medium stroke. Play just a little underneath the nine coming off the, off the back rail for the nine in the side. But so surprising, he ended up short. That's the only way you can err from the six to the seven is end up short. Yeah, he'll, I, like I said, I don't think he'll slam this. Nice medium speed. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. Nice. And that's experience also. Sometimes uh, inexperienced players really want to jam that bank. Uh, and like you said, hitting it too hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he'll shoot this. I think if he goes for the corner, I think maybe the side pocket's in the way for the cue ball. So he may have to shoot this in the side and draw to 
the long cushion and then kind of kill the cue ball down for the 10. He should handle it, though. Hit about the middle diamond with a little low left English. Yeah, like so. He is a fantastic player to watch, David, isn't he? Oh, yeah. A lot of skills. 7-5 to David Alcady against Tyler Steyer here at the final of the Kremlin Cup in Moscow. And what a match we have been watching, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Up and down, back and forth. It's been absolutely crazy. And really a high level. I mean, Tyler had a had a bad miss on a five ball that, that you know, if he goes on to not win this match, that he'll certainly regret and hopefully not regret too much, just shake it off. It's just things that happen. But both guys have played at a high level. Um, you know, like right there, for instance, that opening rail first shot on the one. And again, going going on the aggressive side. And we can say between the two players, it was that was probably the difference, the mentality, you know, where Tyler elected a couple times to play safe. And, and it could have gone better for him, meaning David just kicked out of it. David made great shots to, to, to escape. So can't really fault Tyler. It was just uh, where David's looking to be a little bit more on the aggressive side when he has the opportunity. Or you can see the hardware there on the stage. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it here with three events, the lady, ladies uh, pyramid event and then the men's pyramid event and then what is the Kremlin Cup 10 ball event. Lots of trophies. Mm-hmm. So follow us on ABN Billiards on Facebook. We are 7-5 here at the Kremlin Cup final. And he's a nice break off, and I expect that. He's broke the balls great so far in this match. Okay, the one's coming down. What's the three going to do? He's okay. Oh, the 4-10 looks like it might be jammed up, and it is. So our referee is going to have a difficult time removing this rack. It's going to be fun to watch. And Tyler <laughs> is very upset about it. In this situation, you know what I like? Go on. Well, they did it. They handled it pretty well. But sometimes the two balls can get uh, in a funny spot. But, you know, here they have plenty of the racks. I just snip it. <laughs> just cut it, and then you're never going to move the balls. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, lucky you're not the referee. I think credit to the referee here. They yeah, no, they did great. That yeah, very, yeah. very quick and simple. It's not cost effective or anything. It's but definitely not cost effective, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> it's funny because when the break happens, all I do is I watch the nine ball, and I can't help it. So yeah, I just right, have right. to tell myself quickly that, no, it's not nine ball, Emily. Yeah. It's ten ball. You're looking for that golden break right there. Huh? Oh, yeah. Love a golden break. Yeah, and it's amazing uh, with some of the uh, betting sites uh, what the odds are for the entire event on a golden break. You would think it would be more, but it's like one and a half or something like that over and under. It's pretty amazing. They're a lot more challenging now. That I th oh, they're great, yeah. And I think they're going to get better. Okay, a nice shot there on the one. Can he get a two-rail angle to run the cue ball off the three and just bump the 410? I think he's going to do that. Try and be aggressive here. Or is the two on the table? Am I making a mistake here? No, it's not. Okay. Would you like to borrow my glasses? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Just from here, I couldn't, before the monitor came up, it's hard to tell between the six and the two, but the six is on the table. But I think he's falling really nice here. And the good thing about this is there's not other balls around the 410. So the two rail breakout shot is worth going for meaning it's very hard to get snookered if you if you do run into the four on the ten and I think he's fallen just perfectly natural uh, to get at it now he's got to watch out all ball fouls he'll be queuing over he'll be kind of leaning over the seven and that's what he's paying attention to so he won't go all out like 100 miles an hour here it's just like a nice medium medium aggressive here no, he did hit him. Like he hit him pretty hard. <laughs> no, he. And I think that's maybe why he lost the path of the cue ball a little. Like a lot of times when you're breaking balls out, you can imagine a foot speed, meaning when you hit him, you want him to just go about a foot away. That way you don't lose control, you know. Like right there, if he had to skim the top of the four, he could have scratched in the corner. 
so many different things having to go through your head when you're down on a shot and making this. It's, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't envy these players. Well, that's how complex nine ball pool is. And in a lot of pocket uh, bigger games, are very, very uh, complex games. It's, and the thing is, you don't get to experience all, all of it every day. It's just that when it pops up all of a sudden at the most <laughs> crucial time, you need to know it. So. So he's going to knock the four below the ten, I believe, and let run the cue ball up by the seven. I mean, excuse me, up by the nine. I uh, think that's pretty good speed. Okay, so again, so I'm not, David thinking. Coming well, to the table. if he can get all of this, I wouldn't doubt he goes aggressive and tries to bank the four on the nine. That sounds crazy, but the nine's a big ball up by that corner. He could play a safety, but see the problem with the safety is. You see the seven hanging in the other corner, right? So if he plays the four, like, say, up by the side rail and the cue ball behind the five, if he doesn't get there, he could easily leave Tyler an offensive shot. So maybe he tries to make the four nine here, or maybe he tries to make uh, something with the seven. But I wouldn't doubt if he went for that long rail bank, kind of a la the final shot he made in the Whirlpool Masters. Uh, imagine that. It was a similar shot. I'd love to see a replay of that now. <laughs> well, he's going to play safe. He didn't call anything. But if he doesn't get there, he could easily give something up. Like right here, he overran the cue ball, and now Tyler's got to play on the seven. So that's where I may have gone for what looked like a silly shot, but not, not really, just because of where the seven was. Now, we'll see, does Tyler does Tyler play the cue ball with the seven, or does he cut the four into the rail? That's what I would do, cut the four into the rail and let it make the seven, and let the cue ball, he's travel back into the ten, I think. Something like that. Very surprised that David didn't look at that offensive shot on the four nine. Oh, he's playing the carom. All right, we're going to need a, Need to develop something here, and he's going to get it. So we should get to 7 6 here with David breaking. I'm a bit of a loser because I want it to go to 7 all. <laughs> I love matches like this. that seven hanging the way it was I just even if he had got the snooker with the jump cues I really feel like that Tyler would have had a good chance to make something in that position so he still had to make a good shot of course and gain position on, on the four but it's taking some time he's trying to make a decision do I play short side on the five which I like in this position or do I run the cue ball uh, what would be two rails around the problem with running the cue ball is your speed has to be nice, meaning you definitely don't want to get behind the six, but that sometimes will make you run a little too long and get yourself over on the rail, and, and the five becomes difficult. Jeremy, just a question. Will you give up your day job and become a full-time commentator for match room? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know commentary about that. is so informative. I feel like I'm learning so much just sitting here listening to you. Well, <laughs> Tell me. I think I like, I like to play, so but we'll see. I think there's a lot of guys that could do this job, I think. Oh, uh, don't be so modest. <laughs> Take the compliment. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, I am, but and I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy it. keeps me somewhat in stroke, you might say, sure. without playing so much. Well, I'm secretly hoping that you do terribly in the U.S. Open next oh, okay. year so I can nab you as the commentator. <laughs> there we go. Well, if I make a run at it, maybe I'll, I'll mic up and tell you what I'm thinking while I'm playing or something like that. Not really. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't do both. I no. I wouldn't be able to make a ball probably. But Tyler making a nice out here and doing all he can to keep the heat on David. 
I'm loving that Tyler's still in this, you know, he hasn't let it sort of affect him too much. He's still coming back to the table strong and it just shows how great these both of these players are. Yeah, and he's, you know, talked about it last game. It, he had a miss on the five that was, or on the four getting to the five, excuse me, um, that, you know, shouldn't have happened, basically. I mean, just point blank shouldn't have happened. He'd tell you the same thing. But other than that, it wasn't really, like, he had, he's played pretty darn well. Both guys have. And uh, it's just a matter of how pool is. Sometimes you play safe and your opponent kicks out of it. And that's just, that's just part of it. And these players must come away from matches like this and the small mistakes that have been made, they must learn from them and, you know, take them into their next tournament because it's all part of the experience. And when they come into the situation again, you know, they've kind of learned from it and it makes them a stronger player. Well, and I'll tell you what it really does, and, it, and this is what proves to me that it's a true sport, is that you develop a gut instinct as you play more of these matches, like when you get on the fence about that safety or that shot. Well, you may have the same situation come up, and one time you'll play safe, and the other time you'll play the shot just because of your gut instinct, what it's telling you at the time. Sure. And so you learn to trust that, and that's a, that's a big thing that wins tournaments. So. so we're about to go 7-6 here if Tyler makes this 10 ball here. With David to break next. And... Wow, what a world-class event we have here, Jeremy. Two fantastic players, and what a great match. This is how the final should be, shouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a few swings, of course, uh, but some really high-level pool. Um, we always want to see that, uh, not only every match, but uh, in the finals, for sure, that you want to see it, uh, you know. And just to touch base on um, the dream challenge that's coming up on Monday, Jeremy. So it's uh, ABN Billiards, obviously, um, putting this on, and it's the, the USA versus Russia race to the Moscone Cup. So we've got the six USA chaps. Um, so we've got Skylar and Shane, who are obviously already on the team. Then you've got Corey, Max, Billy, and Tyler, who are all still fighting their way to obviously make Moscone Cup. And then you've got versus Team Russia. I'm not going to pretend I'm going to be obviously super biased because I'm rooting for Team USA for <laughs> because I feel like a win like last year could just give them that boost and that, that confidence boost just looking into the, um, the Moscone Cup. But you can imagine that the, the European players are going to be tuning in and watching on Monday, aren't they? They're oh, going to be absolutely. sitting there going, oh, I wonder well, how well, November's going to be. And so is Marcus because you have uh, Ruslan Chinehoff that's right there on the points. Exactly. And then you have Feder, Feder Gorse that's not far behind as well. And he wants to see how they play, not only meshing in some probably some doubles, but how they play against that American team that they have to face in November. Sure. So I think not only the Americans have some drama involved in what's happening the next three days. Oh, this may be a winning one ball shot. What's the nine and the three going to do? Oh, he's okay. He can get at it. So he's going to have a nice starter on the one to, to try and get this uh, get this run. Not, now the three's a little tied up, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just to touch base again on um, on the ranking points for Team Europe there. This is probably the first time in a, in a while that, you know, Marcus has such a selection of um, players to choose from and also still to qualify. We've come to the Kremlin Cup. There's obviously... The outcome that's uh, happened, it's left it so wide. And like we said, you've got Russellin and Fedor that are still in the, the mix for this. And um, going into the next Euro Tour event, that's going to be, you know, really going to be tough. You've got Ralph Suke, you've got Glenty Catchy. Yeah, I think Ralph's second right now, uh, somewhere around second. The combined points and the and the European points kind of confuse me a little bit at times, <laughs> so I don't try to get too involved. Plus, plus we got to do our job no matter what. Yeah. But. Yeah, there's a lot of drama for There Europe, is a yeah. lot of drama right now, and it is exciting, but this is what's brilliant for ranking points because it creates this drama, and what's not to say that in a couple of years' time we have the exact same for Team USA. Oh, and absolutely. That's what I would love to happen. Look, now there's these tournaments that are happening. You've got Predator coming in, doing um, and CSI, putting on more events, you know, with bigger arenas. It's great because now we've got more stages where we can set up ranking tournaments sure. for the Team USA. Sure. Yeah, the more information you get, the more accurate it's going to be. That's just how it is. Okay, he's falling pretty nice on this two to where, again, is he going to try and get for the breakout or is he going to try and probably play some type of safety? I think the safety is probably the prudent play.
But we've seen David be pretty offensive overall. I know you just can't like anticipate what's going to happen in these matches, can you? Mm -mm. You're always on the edge of your seat. No, that's the round objects. That's why. <laughs> Seriously, in every sport we have round objects, so you never know how it's going to bounce. Uh, it's going to, and now we have, you know, in ten ball we have eleven on, on the table. So I think you're going to see a, a safety by David. So I think on the three, I believe, anyways. Um, so you, Tyler's going to get probably some opportunity to try and kick out of it or jump out of it to to stay in this match. Um, Will not get a hit. Oh, he's going to draw his ball now. He may rip this and try and get at the three and the nine. Uh, he got nice and tidy on it to where he can play the three in the side. Like if the four was hanging somewhere, he would play this ball. But since the four is kind of out in the middle, it's kind of hard to move the cue ball much from this angle. Ooh, it looks better than, than I thought it did, though. I, I would have to play this ball myself and take the cut on the four on the side. I think it goes by the eight, no problem. Yeah, it does. He's shooting it, too. I'll go for it. Yeah. I think that's correct, though, myself. I mean, it's a missable ball because it's a very uh, small angle going into that side pocket. Um, traditionally, the players know how much tougher the diamond side pockets are than most of the tables we play on. The thing is, he has to make this one, and he knows he can't move the cue ball much because of the small angle, so he's going to have to make another nice shot on the next one, that being the pink four. God, he really doesn't like this shot, does he? I'm going to call the shot clock on him. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll cause extension then. <laughs> no extension. And it looks it to me... The extension would have run out by now. Right. He's going to try and pinch it back an inch or two just to make that... Oh, my. Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Wow. So that was all about trying to make the four easier. And I think that was the mistake. You had to realize that I have to make two good shots there. Uh, and that's what's going through his head. It's not just the, the yeah. three ball there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he just stops his ball, there's. He, I don't think he misses that ball. He doesn't miss hit it uh, so badly. But there's trying a, to get a little extra out of the cue ball. And there's obviously so much going through his mind there. And, it, you know, if we timed him there on the shot, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, and it must just be playing with your head so much and then like what you keep saying you have to execute the shot as well mm. and that's the tough part and i really think at first when he shot the two that he never planned on going offensive on the three so then all of a sudden it, it, he got so nice on it that he was like okay i can shoot this and and then the uh, the steps that followed you might say to probably some two minutes of of you know trying to think what what's the right thing to do we don't have cat. We don't have caddies, we, you know, <laughs> to to give us a a little heads up on, or a little experience on what might be the right play. So what is good is that, for instance, in tournaments like at the World Cup Hall or in the Moscone, if that is a doubles match right there, mm -hmm. and you've got say David Alcady was with Ruiz and he's standing there, they discuss that together. That potentially is obviously a good thing for, um, for them in that position because they can go to their their uh, partner and ask their advice on it. Sure. A partner might say, hey, I can handle the four from just stopping right there. That makes the three so much easier. And a great shot by Tyler Steyer there. Not not easy. And another not easy one. Uh, now, that's why picking those doubles are so important because it can backfire. Exactly. It can backfire for sure. <laughs> the balance. I must say, it's been such an enjoyable match to watch so far. Um, we obviously only do the four pool events um, throughout the year, so we don't get to watch much pool because of the different sports that we do. But what an enjoyable match that this has been. 
And a big shot here for Tyler. Uh, not only pocketing the ball, but he's got to put a lot on the cue ball to gather some position on the five. He's got a couple pockets for the five, so the key here is make a clear cut decision on how you want to play it. Don't just let the cue ball kind of wander. And the one thing he does know is he'd sure like to be breaking the balls off in uh, what would be our last game at 7-7. Seven to seven. I'd love that. <laughs> well, I think you're going to see that. Yeah, that's what I would look if I was him. The 5 goes in the side, and it also goes in the upper corner by the 7. So no reason to try and put a ton on this ball trying to get above the 5. Keep it simple. And he's changed to the open hand bridge, so that tells me he's kind of killing the cue ball two rails and playing the five in either the uh, the side or the upper corner. Ah, he went three rails. He's going to need some fortune. And he may get it. He may get it. He did get it. I think he may have snookered David. No, maybe not. David's got a piece of it, I believe. And that was... Uh, just not sure where where he was trying to go with the cue ball, but I guess a couple rails for the five in the corner where it's at. Uh, now David's in a funny position here. If he can see a piece of this, I'm not so sure the safety is available with the nine being there. He has to go by the nine here. Okay, he did so. And he got the snooker, so a nice shot. I believe he got the snooker anyways. It was quite an animated reaction from Tyler earlier. I've seen it a lot um, happen quite often throughout this match, and you probably wouldn't have seen that a couple of months ago from him. Maybe that's sort of developed with uh, how he's been playing as well. Um, yeah, and that there was some frustration early in the tournament, actually. Uh, okay. Johan and I talked about it. Um, you know, uh, Johan helps Tyler a bit more at times. Uh, they, You know, you have guys that mesh. That's just how it is. And, and certain techniques that we're working on. And, and um, I help Tyler a lot as, as much as possible. But it w there was some frustration at some times early in the tournament uh, that, that he was trying to pan out. And we saw a bit of it right there. And mm. It must know, be so hard for a player human to nature, not show though. that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I like it, actually. Oh, I don't mind it at I all. I love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind the fire at all myself. But it's I'm, great for TV. Mm -hmm. It's honest. It's pure. Yeah, yeah, and you just see the passion from the player as well and what it means to them. And, you know, this is a big tournament. They're in the final of the Kremlin Cup here. And yeah. it's okay to be frustrated. Sure. It's okay to be mad at yourself. It's okay to be have a lot of things going on, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, you know, the biggest fan of what you might call a robot player, or, no. you know, so. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so all of those players that want to get on the Moscone Cup, you need to be nice and anim yeah, animated. <laughs> right. And be yourself doing it. Oh, my. Oh my so goodness. we're starting to see some mistakes here in what is game number 14 that we haven't seen at all the entire match, pretty much. Very jumpy with the stroke there. Do you think it's just because it's, it's obviously getting a lot more tense? There's probably maybe a bit of fatigue there as well, or? Yeah, I, I, I can't, I don't, maybe it's the winning moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe it's the tense moment, I think, more than anything. Um, so we'll see. There's a number of things that can play into these types of misses, and now Tyler's shot was much more difficult, I think, than David's, so much more missable. Um, I didn't expect that from David, of course. And that was trying to get the cue ball back back across. That had everything to do with that. All right, he's going to need a nice... Oh, my. I thought he got a horrible bump, but he's okay. Now he's falling funny as he going into the eight with the cue ball. Does he have to worry about the eight at all here? Because when you fall on the rail with the cue ball, Emily, you can't really... Um, manufacture a lot of different things trying to avoid trouble. He wants the cue ball cleaned, I think, because he's going to have to roll this a touch. So 
Normally the guys are going to clean it when they're hitting the ball more lightly because they don't want uh, the kick factor, the skid factor. Okay. Now, you weren't here yesterday, but they really did a lot of different things to the arena here for the finals. They, had, they brought in the drop lights, which we had all overhead lights before, and it was great. The conditions were great to play in, but it's, it's funny, definitely a it's little different. It's funny what happens, over, what can happen overnight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's got to sl slow roll this a little bit. And I think that's not only to hold for the seven, but also so he doesn't have many problems with the eight. If he puts a little more speed on this, the cue ball kind of ricochets off the five a little more and gets into the eight. So he's got to kind of smooth it to get by the eight. Okay, nice. And he got into the eight anyways. Did he get a shot? Oh, my. I can't see the table, but I can see Tyler Steyer, and that's not the look I was, I was wanting. So we're going to see the jump cue, and, and that was just a little unfortunate that he caught that nine coming down the table and fell right on the rail to where he really couldn't do much with the cue ball in this shot here. It's called the seven. So here's that jump shot you like so much, Emily. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. Not a big underdog here, not much of an angle. The pocket's pretty big from this kind of angle. Um, and position, he should be able to hold for the eight in the upper corner if he does make the seven. The key here is, where I make the mistake is I say to myself, let me make sure I get over the eight and I hit it too hard and I lose accuracy. These guys are so good, they stay real to the shot itself, meaning they don't worry about getting over the eight and they keep the accuracy uh, hitting the seven okay. so well. Yeah. I almost have to remind myself to trust that the jump cue is going to do its work yeah. and get it over the ball. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to see him make this. Uh. Yeah, great camera view there. I love that one. Takes a steady hand. Oh, oh great shot. So he didn't come away with much angle on the eight. But the nine's very available, I think. So he either has to go forward maybe for the side or draw back for the corner. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, the side's very available. And he doesn't have much angle on the eight, so... Looks like 7-7 seven, seven is what we're, we're staring right in the face. Race to eight. How exciting, Jeremy. Now, Tyler sometimes will really let the stroke go here and draw this cue ball all the way back up to the top rail and back down for the nine uh, just because of how well he draws the ball. And that's I think that's what he's doing, actually. Who's breaks it next? I'm just totally mind blank. Well, Tyler Steyer, he won the lag. Yes, okay. And he was chalking up like he was putting a, the power draw on this ball, so I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of steam on the cue ball. So one semi-long shot on the nine. I think position is pretty easy to carry for the ten. Looking at potential seven all here if Tyler takes this rack and it will be Tyler next to break 
and what a final match we have had so far, Jeremy. Yeah, a couple misses by each of the players, but again, a, a very high level in my opinion. There you go. And how good would an extra timeout be right now? Yeah, it would probably be taken too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Both players would probably love to have a little something, but uh, Tyler's going to go on into breaking the balls here. And we'll see if uh, I kind of get the feeling he's going to break and make like five on the break, I swear. I mean, okay. I've seen him do it I'll a bunch of times. I've seen him do it a bunch of Well, four is okay, right? Yeah. So, But I've seen him do it a bunch of times, and it's one one heck of a weapon he has uh, with that break shot. So it's the final rack of the Kremlin Cup here. here yeah, at the final. Tyler Steyer and David Alcady at seven all. The production in here is great, Jeremy. I keep looking. I know we've got the monitor here and mm -hmm. obviously the table, but I have my TV head on and I keep looking around and I look at the cameras, look at the trussing and the lights and everything. And there's a great crowd in here as well. Obviously, some of the players have stayed on to watch, which I think is great for the game. There's a lot of people in here, and it's it's just a great event here. And um, I'm really impressed, obviously, for my first time visiting. And, I mean, just look at that arena. It just looks fantastic. Yeah, and no, like what I consider one of the most important things and when you're running events is trying to make it better from year to year, and that's what they're doing here in Moscow. Uh, it's a lot of cameras, a mm -hmm. lot of different angles, and that's, that's what the people at home want to watch. You know, they want to be able to see what the shots look like, and they want to be able to see what we can see as such, and uh, the level of production they've put into this is um, really impressive. Great tournament, and I'm excited to come back next year. And I think uh, we're going to have a lot of the same crew uh, for the Dream Challenge, actually. Oh, great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, here we go. It's not going to back off, I don't think. This is it, guys. Final rack. All right, he hit him great. Did he get one down? He got one down. He's going to get a shot at the one with the two over the side. He's going to have some work from the four to the five, but I sure like his chances, Emily. How's his heart rate going now? It's jacked. Don't <laughs> worry. I've never heard the term Mine's jacked a little before. Jacked. Mine's a little jacked, <laughs> I know. Too. I was going to have to like quiet you down there. I was scared you were being too loud and just shouting. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Don't overthink it, Tyler. Just kind of flow. you got the five in the opposite side that goes by the six. So two to the one, two to two, two to three is easy. You're going to come down the table and just play short side on the five in the opposite side, I believe, is the correct path. Don't worry. Kind of relish. That's what you want. You want a tough out. I mean, of course, everybody wants the, like a throw in, right? But you should relish in making a tough out to win your first first major event. I agree entirely. You just and I like shooting the two and falling on the short side of the three. That way, I can come down towards the four and get that nice angle easily. I wouldn't be fooled on trying to draw off the three here. I like like I said that 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 side of the table is so clear that. Just get a little bit of an angle on the two to where you can go past the three there and follow down. I think he just kind of noticed that, that that's, that's the right path. Because if you have to draw, now you're involving that side pocket that's near the three, maybe really kind of hampering the cue ball. And the two is not missable is the, is the good thing. So he's he's come down to where he has a choice, I think. He can kind of pound it past the three and go shoot the three up long, which I like myself. Like, yeah, there you go. That's going to make getting on the four to the five much more uh, guaranteed, you might say. Oh, imagine being one of these players right now. Yeah, the David pressure. is. David's over there. Uh, he's hoping for any glimpse of an exactly. opportunity. Yeah. Just one opportunity to get back on that table. Okay, he didn't want to fall underneath it too much. But he, he let the cue ball go a little more distant, so that angle, it becomes slimmer the further the cue ball gets away. Uh, if he was a little closer to it there, that could be a problem. Well, he does have to go short side on the four. All right, so now here come some decisions. Now 
you can see with the one thing with the five a little covered up that he doesn't want to get very straight on this four ball. He needs angle to come back down the table. I think he I think he's okay though. This is a big shot here. If he can gain the angle, stay off the rail with the cue ball, he'll be able to get some type of position on the five, I think. I didn't know the five went in between the 610 and that lower right hand corner so he's in prime position now just to come up that what is uh, that side of the table where the cue balls on now for position on the five this is just top right English no problems really he's looking at the side which I initially liked um, but with that corner available I, I may have I may have to have played for the corner but again, just an inch makes you change your mind on what decision sure. you're going to make. So, Yeah, right there, that's what I like, where he's looking there. And he's got the side. The thing is, you don't want to get kind of no man's land, like on the in-between. Mm -hmm. That's the one. You want to make a clear-cut decision and, and go with it. He's going to get the cue ball cleaned. So it's seven all here the final of the Kremlin Cup. This is the final rack of the tournament. Race to eight. And David, uh, if he doesn't get back to the table here, he's going to be a little upset about a few opportunities he missed, but uh, a, another great tournament for David Alcady. Just watching the match, you do have a sense that perhaps that Tyler has played perhaps stronger than or had less... Less Misses. errors, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the way the match has gone, I could say fairly that whoever won, they deserved it. They deserved it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The pool gods really didn't favor one guy or the other, I don't think. Okay, is that too much speed on the cue ball? Oh, no, that's nice. That is <laughs> nice. This is where, again, go with your gut. Don't overthink it too much. Looks like he's going to just kind of shove the cue ball over just a touch for the six in the lower left corner. And I thought the angle told me that it wasn't so easy to do that. So maybe he's rolling into that position more than shoving the cue ball. It looks like he could. Okay, he's good. A little light. Just a hair, but he's going to play from above the 10 on the 8, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. A lot of guys would have liked to have gotten below, but and so would he probably, but quick to recognize that nothing wrong with playing above. This is too tense for me, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm literally on the edge of my seat. I, can't, I don't even know. Yeah, how I'm a little clammy to myself. So. <laughs> I mean, there's so much going through his mind right now. You know, he wins this, this Moscow Cup that, you know, his justification to you know, making the team. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it must be so intense with Tyler right now. And like anything else, the first and last are hard to get. Uh, meaning that first big win is this hard. This is his first big exactly, title, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and really big. Like, uh, you know, there are smaller events that he hasn't won yet either. Sure. You know, and like, so he's jumping a few levels here. And I'd like to see him Just win like he did last like year. Yeah, it absolutely. Gives gives definitely junior players and the younger players, especially over in USA as well, the, you know, the feeling that this can happen for them. They put in the time, the work, and you know that knowing Tyler a little bit, he's very sort of strict and he's regimented in, mm -hmm. you know, his practice. He was practicing late last night at the Bazaar Club and I left before him. So right. it's, uh, 
it's really impressive to watch. Okay, really pretty much just about one more shot to get this title. There's three left on the table, but you can see this eight is the one that's probably going to secure it. Does he go up and down, or does he just roll it? Ooh, okay, so a hair thick to the pocket, so still a little bit more position, a little, a little bit more of a shot on the nine than he probably wanted, but still should handle it. Thing is here, don't ease it too much. You want real clean contact from cue ball to object ball, so you can handle a little bounce off that second cushion. Okay. So, there you go. This is the potential final shot of yeah. the Kremlin Cup final. Well, there's no potential about it. Emily. This is the final. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> He's not missing this one. And that's it. Tyler Steyer takes down the Kremlin Cup title. Yeah. And uh, again, another fine tournament for David Arcady. He'll be back uh, in this position for sure. And Tyler Steyer takes down the 2019 uh, 10 ball division of the Kremlin Cup. Uh, thank you, Emily Frazier. And everyone else for tuning in. I'm Jeremy Jones. Uh, we'll be back Monday on the ABN for what will be the dream the, challenge. Yeah, the third <laughs> annual dream challenge. Excited. Um, so everyone enjoy, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.